Warning, it is the opinion of the Forestry Productions LLC and the Working Perspectives podcast that we should inform you that some of the language used in this recording could possibly be considered offensive. You have been warned, so if you decide to listen to the recording, then don't complain about the language. Hi, hello, how are you? Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to talk to some real people about some real things, living real lives, doing real stuff. This is the Working Perspectives Podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle, coming today by Jalen Dove, Justin Richardson, Captain Jerkbeard, Tom Lavelle, and our guest today is the one and only Chris Corona. You can find all our content and all our stuff on all podcast platforms and YouTube at Working Perspectives Podcast. The ant was on Instagram at Working Perspectives Podcast, and you can join us on the Twitter and the TikTok. At Working P Pod. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please email us at workperspectives at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe so I can stop asking you to like and subscribe. Tom, how are we doing? We ready to do this? Yeah, ready to go. Very nice. So, this is the Work Perspectives Podcast. Let's get this thing started. Let's go. It's our objective to be effective by voice in societies. Working perspectives, exploring your day. Tell you a little something about our guest today, the one, the only Chris K. Rona. Um, so originally met Chris back in high school. I think I was a sophomore or junior year, and I was working at this place up in Easton, and I had a couple friends up there. And me and Chris first got to chat over AOL Instant Messenger, bringing people together. AOL Instant Messenger, right? And then I was wrestling, me and Tom were wrestling up there a lot at the time. So we would see Chris at different like wrestling practices and camps and things like that. And we gave him the buddy around and hang out and, you know, you know, just chill a little bit and talk over instant messenger and become friendly. But he was one of these guys that like, I initially felt like connected with because he's a good dude, you know, salt of the earth type of guy. Everyone kind of likes him, digs him, you know what I mean? Fits in with everybody. Tom, would you agree? You had kind of a similar first kind of impression with Chris? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Salt of the earth is what you said, right? Salt of the damn earth. So (laughs) I'll tell this story because we're going to get a little bit more into it later. So uh chris at the so chris was wrestling for easton and at the time there was no better team right it is it was the powerhouse they were i think that one year there's there was uh 12 weight class and they placed in eight of them right like they were just monsters right and that's when chris was wrestling there so he was jv and he was trying to break the lineup and we're at a training session one time And we're all going and everyone's wrestling. And there's a young kid there who's like a couple years younger than Chris. And Chris was like going into his senior year and he's like, you know, uh, touted to break the lineup and be varsity and all this stuff. And he's wrestling this kid. Right. And, you know, like this kid was a little younger and this kid ended up taking him down one time. And like you could see physically like Chris was like, damn it, like I'm older than this kid, like. I'm going to be varsity next year. Like I'm like, you know, like I should be better. Right. And it really like, I remember after practice, like talking with him and being like, dude, it's all right. Like you're going to get after it. Don't sweat it. It's only like we're in summer training. It's not the biggest deal. Turns out the kid that took him down was this kid named Jordan Oliver, who would end up being like, you know, uh, like a national champion, <laughs> like like one of the fucking best best wrestlers out right now, like super good kid. But after that, Chris, that just lit a fire under him. And it ended up like taking him taking off and like growing and expanding and really being able to push himself and, and kind of figure out what he was made of and turned him into a powerhouse, right? And we'll come to find out more about that later. 
but really just like proud of like the dedication he put in and really how it turned his life around. Cause a lot of people would have, after that would have like packed up and quit and said like, Oh, I guess it's not for me. And woe is me and this kind of bullshit, but not Chris. He fucking stood up. He went, I need to get better. He figured out how to do it. He did the work and the improvement was unreal. He would end up, well, we'll talk more about it, but he would end up making varsity and doing very well in the season and the postseason and ha- ended up in a great career and going to college and things like that. So really excited. You know, it's one of these things, one of the best things about doing this show. And it's like you get to reconnect with people. So uh, when we had Molly Godfrey on the show a couple months ago, great episode, which is available now on all podcasts, Life about work perspectives podcast. She, me and her were talking in the pre-show meeting stuff, and she had brought up Chris and how Chris is now owns a barber shop in Easton PA Leo's barbershop uh address and phone number will be in the description as well as a link um but just you know just how well he's doing and honestly I begged her just to go ask him to be on the show and dude when he agreed to be on the show I knew I was like man we must be doing something right here if the guy this good and a guy this classy would agree to be on our little show, you know? So I was super tickled when he said he would be on. And I'm all like all kinds of happy he's here. And I know we're going to get into it later. And Chris, I'm so happy what you're doing and everything. But before we get started, I would just like to ask, what movie do you think's better? Godfather Part 1 or Godfather Part 2? Two. two. <laughs> in your fucking face, Look, Justin! In yeah, your right. fucking face! You gotta Enough. go two with the flashbacks, two, you know? Two is better! It's so much better! You get Sicily, then you get fucking, the, you know, going to Cuba, then you get all of that. Duh! You, you, gotta, you gotta love the flashbacks, I mean, to me. Dude, Lake Tahoe! The fla- oh, the flashbacks are great. When he gets to slice up his, when he gets to slice up the dad, that the guy that killed his dad at the end, he stabs him in the stomach, and rips it. You know, he's yeah, hiding in and, a fucking donkey cart to escape. I mean, and that was the first time we saw uh, Bobby D. Right? Was in two, I believe. I mean, he was in. I don't know. Uh, was he in Mean Street for that? And that's. I mean, that was the first time in The Godfather. I mean. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's but Mean Streets is another class. Oh, great movie! One of some say Scorsese's best, but. Dude, he was, but no, he was, dude, that was like De Niro's coming out party. You know what I mean? That's when everyone's like, okay, this guy went from, you know, the JV to the vice real fucking quick. But yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right, Chris. That's a correct answer. Godfather part two is always going to be better than Godfather part one. Fucking cause you're schmack. You're schmack, Chris. Look at you. You're schmack. I'm schmack. I mean, one's still a classic too. So that one's dude, nothing to take nothing away from one. One is great, but it's not two. Two's better. Apollonia was in one, so I like oh. Apollonia. <laughs> <laughs> <That's what everyone laughs> it's funny you mention that because we, when we asked this question before, someone said the incorrect answer and chose Godfather Part One, and they chose it specifically because of Apollonia, which I mean, we all me, know. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, it makes me question myself because everyone's favorite character from that movie so far has been Apollonia. Mine's Luca Brasi. <laughs> <laughs> I love Luca Brasi too, dude. My as long dad, as they didn't say three. No, oh on. my god, I don't. That's not. Even, I've never seen three. Dude, three is like Rocky that. Five. You don't. Eh. You don't really recognize this part. Of nah. But no, uh, dude, my dad used to quote Luca Brasi like all the time. Dude, uh, him that's sitting outside of the. I do it all the time too. I hope that your first child may is your, a masculine. <laughs> may your first child. <laughs> Be a masculine. Be a masculine. He's, protect- he's, pr- he's uh fucking practicing outside. Oh. Dear <laughs> Godfather. Yeah. On today, the day of your daughter's wedding. Just goes on, on Corleone. Yeah. yeah. The so best. Good. The best. And then, dude. I mean, even his death scene when they get him with the fucking, they stab him in the hand and get him with the garage. That was pretty oh, good. The ice pick. Yeah. Yeah. That was so. Whatever good. that was. Dude, think about <laughs> like his that. body armor on you. Uh, He's a big man. But like they got him. With, he goes like, to work. They got him. Like, could you imagine choking a guy that big with the wire? You right. Like, that's all oh, his got face, him. too. Oh, for that scene was spot dude, on. How about it, man? Like that level of acting. Could you imagine being an actor and being told, hey, we're going to pretend to stab you in the hand with an ice pick <laughs> and then we're going to choke you with a wire? Can you pull that scene off? Also, <laughs> you're, you're mentally handicapped, kind of killer. <laughs> that's your guy. <laughs> You know, like Luke Zabrazzi is such an infamous character. And he had what, three lines in the whole movie? We well, had yeah. one line that he said four times. That is pretty damn impressive. True, true. Icon, total icon. But yeah, no, <laughs> not taking anything away from one, but two is just so, dude, the fucking the donkey show. And I know it was you, Fredo. I know it was you. And you broke my heart. 
Come on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. When they're in Pacino. Cuba. Oh. oh, yeah. Dude, Pacino just puts on a fucking clinic. I don't want, you know, any of Tom, your thoughts? I like them both. It's hard to say which one I like better mm-hmm. when I think about it, but, oh, you know, well, it I all guess. depends on my mood, I think. So, uh, like we said, Chris is the owner, operator, and head barber at Leo's Barber Shop in downtown Easton. So when we had Molly on the show, she had told us like downtown Easton has made a total flip. Because, dude, I remember when like I was hanging out up there, downtown Easton wasn't that great. You know what I mean? Like it was like, what was Jabberwockies? Was that the name of the bar? Right. Or something like Probably, that. Yeah. <laughs> but it was I like think a, that might have become I don't even know which one that was, but I remember the name yeah but they had like dude they have like a nice strip like you have like a nice strip that goes down by like the crayola factory oh it's beautiful man they've done so much stuff it's wild the transformation is crazy yeah everybody's moving there from the city i mean it's right between philly and new york it's perfect yeah Yeah. but dude like plus dude they're saying like they're getting high quality restaurants down there and nice boutiques and shops and cafes and like all that like that's what you need. Yeah, That's what brings we have in. an amazing uh, steakhouse that I love. Oak. It's called uh, Three Oaks. It's called and has a rooftop bar. It's classy joint, man. And Dude. we never used to have stuff like that. It's yeah. crazy to have yeah. that now. And you got all that old architecture down there. You know what I mean? Like yeah, colonial classic. times, man. Like yeah. there's a lot of stuff going down in Easton back in the day that people oh. have no idea about. Oh, dude, Easton's an old city. It's been they around. read the Declaration of Independence in the circle there, Philly, and Trenton. Damn, Trenton? Yeah, Man. I think that's what I've been. Mean, I hope I don't sound like an idiot. I think those are the three. No, it's probably you're probably right. I have no idea. I mean, Trenton someone makes the world it. takes. Trenton makes and the world takes. Don't you ever fucking that's forget it. it. <laughs> I've heard is that. Is it before? huge on the? Is it on the bridge or on the? It was a sign, right? Yeah, it was a, sign. a sign. Yeah, it used to be Something right by the like bridge. That says what trend makes the world takes and it was somebody's <laughs> slogan you know and i was like i don't know shit about trenton but like they're talking heavy as soon as you come yeah. in so like yeah yeah <laughs> they let you know sure yeah sure nice so okay so uh chris like we said justin is in dire need of a haircut i can't cheat on my barber former guest of the show friend of the show bad billy nichols billy to baba um but how do we find your barbershop do you have an app do you have a website what do you got yeah i got a website that uh gives you a link to make an appointment or you just call me make an appointment or you just show up like some people still do Oof. uh That's yeah gonna be rough. it's you know you it's tell just them, me like, do you tell them like if they show up you're like look man i'm literally booked solid till four and it's two o'clock you want to wait two hours wait two hours but other than that yeah and then you know then they want to come back at four and have it after where I close. So, uh, I mean, I'm always, uh, you know, yeah. I make, I do what I can for people, but yeah, it's just me. So, yeah. you know, your options are kind of limited. <laughs> <laughs> are you, is every barbershop close on Monday? Is that a thing? It's a thing. It's definitely yeah. a thing. I don't think everyone is, but it's most definitely a thing, especially in Pennsylvania. Dude. I think somebody told me in Jersey, it was a different day back in the day. I don't know, but yeah. Mondays in PA is for sure closed barbershops and pizzerias. Yeah. Don't get your hair cut on Monday. Don't even fucking try it. Why? Right. Don't even try it. <laughs> dude, I guess because people like want to get it, their haircuts more closer to the weekend or something. Dude, the barbers need a day they off too, day off. I guess. Right. Well, like, now that there's, you got these big barbershops now though, where there's like so many people working that I think like somebody's always willing to cover Monday now. Yeah. So I yeah. think a lot of them are open on Mondays, but before at least, Back well, in the, the day, it was definitely a big thing. The supercut gimmicks and that horse shit, they're open Mondays, but that's because they're chain bullshit. But like the good places, if you know, they don't, you know, they know Mondays, you know, you, it's the Bob of Code. Don't be open Mondays. All right. <laughs> if, you're, if you're going, just this is to everyone listening to this podcast, if you're going to supercuts or haircuttery Ugh. or uh, what's that other one? There's one, they're awful. I've Shit's tried real. it because I'm the asshole. Sport clips. Sport clips. Shop. Yeah, I, I'm, the, I'm the asshole hey, that shows about your barbershop. And they like, also I have a wedding. Purpose. I need a haircut in two hours. <laughs> but, uh, oh, God. Yeah, I've Dude. walked out with some wow. I just, I one time just wanted my head shaved. And I, like, walked out and did this. And I was like, what? I could have, I could have did this. Yo, I, <laughs> I, I, le- I legit went to Sport Clips, right? And, like, you go in. You have to, like, do whatever on the thing. And it was right, like, I was in debt, like, at this point. 
Like I, I used to go to this Russian dude to get my hair cut and then he got kind of weird and religious on me. So I stopped going to him. <laughs> and then I was like going to different places, trying to find it. This is before I found, you know, uh, the barbershop I go to now, but I went to sport clips and I went in there legit dude. Like I got done and like I had, she tried to fade me, but I had a line like going around my head cause she didn't fade it in. Right. And like, I had to call my mother-in-law who owns a salon to be like, please, can you just fix this? Please. I look like <laughs> fucking Mo from the three stooges. This is brutal. And it was like, dude, I mean, dude, that's like, it's legit. Like they're putting people in there that never even fucking cut. I hair. know you kind of feel, you know, sad for, you know, some of the people that are both going there and working there for real, man. But yeah. I don't have to worry about it. You know? Hey, look at you. <laughs> you got the curly cut. <laughs> That's it, bro. Yeah. Nice. Do you, I mean, do you bick it? And then. Yeah. I mean, I use a uh, shaver, like an electric yeah. shaver, but yeah, take it down in the skin. Nice. What is, I mean, why do they say Bic in it? Is it because Bic razors? Bic razor. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's what I thought. Man, dude, I made the mistake one time. I didn't know the lingo. <laughs> Another barbershop, when I lived in uh, Roxborough, there was a barbershop in East Falls called Uppercuts, right? And mm-hmm. I was boxing at the time. I was like, well, I got to go to this fucking shop. Plus, they were pretty good. Matt, shout out, Matt. He's a pretty good barber. But I remember I went there, and, like, the first time I went in, and I didn't really know the lingo, right? And he, he was like, all right. I was like, can I just get a fade, you know, high top fade? And he was like, all right, skin? And I was like, yeah, I have skin. You know, <laughs> and he, he just went like so tight with it. I mean, it looked nice and it was like sharp and the lines were tight. But I was like, damn, I can't go that low again. You know what I mean? But well, hey, there's only a few days difference, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goes I was like, right in. Yeah, I, uh, I used to call it the uh, the Corey Matthews haircut cycle of shame. Right. And that's, <laughs> that's how I did. So nice. All right. So let's keep it moving. So like we said, we'll have a link to Chris's Barbershop in the description of this episode. Highly suggest going, man. Got nothing but great reviews. It's a great shop. And like we said, he'll take care of you. So let's keep it moving. So Chris here, born and raised in Easton, PA, land of the free, home of the brave. He did all his schooling in the Easton public school system, K through 12. He would end up doing a little cut stand, doing a little wrestling there. You know, and then going to Northampton Community College, things like that. But, dude, I'll say this, right? And we talked about it when Molly was on the show. There's something in the fucking water up in Easton because you guys are fucking nuts. Every fucking one of you, right? (laughs) And But we'll talk about, too, one of the things you're nuts about is that it's crazy to think, like, in Pennsylvania, the number one sport in Pennsylvania on a whole is football, right? Like, you have a massive college team's. You have massive pro teams, right? And like even high school, it's very big. But yep. in Easton, the number one sport is wrestling, right? So we're going to talk about it a little bit. Chris, you started wrestling at a really young age. You were nine, right? Yeah. And, I mean, that's not young for Easton, but it's yeah. young for like, well, I guess what? I was seven, Tom. You were what, nine? when we started yeah i was seven years but that's because we lived in california and they didn't have it Ah. yeah when we moved here it was like the first thing my dad did he's like all right we're doing wrestling now (laughs) but in easton everyone's starting at the age of five right and yeah yeah they started early man and i think it was the biggest sport i don't know if it still is but it was back then for sure yeah at easton yeah i mean even to be able to compete and say you were or you're number two that's incredible you know oh yeah as a yeah i mean wrestling you know but back then especially in the lehigh valley itself not just easton i mean nazareth northampton easton yeah uh was just wild i mean look at this year just for instance it's still the power center of the state you got uh nazareth wrestled becca in the triple a final yeah and um saucon valley wrestled notre dame in the double a final and they're all in the lehigh valley oh yeah, dude, I remember Easton won it and Wilson won it the same year, and legit, and we're two blocks away, two blocks away from each other. One's a double, double A, one's a, a triple A. Triple a. Would yeah. you say it's more than uh, like a Western Pennsylvania? I know uh, that's a big. Uh, that's, that's the, the big, big argument because I always thought it was, you know, Easton. I think so, but yeah. you know, you could call me biased, but yeah, you know, what it do is, I know? I mean, I is. wasn't. 
I don't know. My buddy, the guy that I Western knew that... PA's got a couple, but like on a whole, the it's got to be Eastern, right? I don't know. Lehigh because Valley. Lehigh well, Valley. I mean, we're, we're, hey, Southeast throws a couple guys in every once in a while, right? Mike yeah. Pirazzola, you know? Mike Pirazzola, yeah, legend. Legend. Him legend. and, uh, God, what was the dude at GA, Tom? Number one recruit in the nation. Nate Walkner. Yeah. Nate Walkner was the number one high school wrestling recruit in the nation. And, you know, Southeastern PA guy. No big deal. We got a couple. Um, but either way, <laughs> let's keep it going. So let's get into it because wrestling is going to be a big part of the stuff here. So you started wrestling at the age of nine, right? And you did like, you know, like you came up through it and you were always wrestling. How did you like, I'll tell you this, dude. And my, for some reason, my daughter lately has loved listening to the song eye of the tiger you know what i mean <laughs> right and oh, like so like dance to it and do her thing and it's great but i'm not gonna lie every time i hear that song i still get like nervous energy because when we were midgets and in, in midget wrestling when we would drive to a match or a tournament or a meet or whatever my dad that was all he would play would be the rocky soundtrack just on repeat as we would go and even now like hearing those songs i'm like god like all you're thinking is like all right well i guess i'm just gonna get ready to you know have a cockfight with another kid <laughs> you know what i mean it must have been that time period man because we listened to rocky four soundtrack on repeat back then man oh, Going, for sure. calmer wrestling days man it was that was huge so is there how many like does Easton have a bunch of midget programs or There's, just one well i don't know what there is now but back then there was palmer forks san anthony's and easton pal okay. and uh yeah now it's basically just palmer and forks i think i think they're yeah. going to try to bring one of the other ones back because that was like for the downtown area and i yeah. don't know if they have one anymore oh, but really? palmer and forks were uh definitely two big ones yeah, yeah. yeah. and st anthony's is where larry holmes trained out of so then they oh. they had a team there nice nice that's where the oliver boys trained oh really yep dude josh man talk about like you know he was so good too but so didn't. good yeah people forget yeah he was fucking didn't he get state runner up or something did yes. he do yeah yes. yes and he was he another was so one good. he was another one that was like i remember him coming on late and stuff like you know he was a, he was a good kid though he was a couple years oh, younger yeah. than me but he was a good kid same like yeah, we won't get into it, but he had his things. But yes, yes. So okay, so you wrestled the midgets, did all that, and then like middle school too, and all that. You wrestled through then. Yeah, it was a weird time for me. Uh, I was serious about it in midgets. Like I think I took second in the league my last year, and uh, then I got into the weird junior high funk where there was just so many good kids at my weight and mm -hmm. uh I don't also, know, like, I just... kids are starting to mature and if there's a big gap between the kids yeah. that are and aren't and kids are growing yeah. and, and i yeah. was real small real small mm -hmm. and uh yeah so junior high was a weird time i don't think i don't know if i got any varsity time in junior high yeah and uh then right up to jv in high school and uh rode that out for three years and got serious finally my junior year going into senior year and uh yeah. you know made the best of it dude when i so the story i told and we had talked about this during the pre-show do you think that was when like the fire got lit because you really did make a huge turnaround right because you like how you had to wrestle off to make varsity right and then once you like won wrestle offs then you had the spot and you had to hold the spot all year right yeah but Jordan was way, you know, was younger. He wasn't even, uh, I think he was eighth grade then. So yeah. it was like, Jordan was a phenom and, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, basically he was that good. And yeah. when he took me down, uh, like you said when we were at that camp or whatever, and yeah, I don't know if that was the time, but somewhere along that time, it, uh, it all seemed to something clicked. Well, and I got dude, more serious about it. You had like, you legit had a choice to make, right? Like you could either give up or you could fucking, you know, turn it around. And like, you were like, you, I met, dude, I distinctly remember like we're outside the garage and you're like, there, like this with like your head down, just like thinking. And like, you could see like you're visibly upset. And I was just thinking, mm -hmm. I was like, he's got like, I mean, like, it was kind of like, he knows what he has to do. And now is he going to do it or is he going to quit? And then you ended up doing it. 
and let's talk about that. So wrestling is a crazy mental sport. Let's just put that out there, man. Couldn't, couldn't talk about more. scars. Talk no. about scars, man. I mean, couldn't yeah. agree more, dude. You spend your life wrestling, you're gonna have some. Uh, you're gonna have some scars, mentally yeah. and physically. I would say. Yeah, exactly. And For I sure. meant mentally, but definitely physically. Too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I mean, also like it does, it is, I mean, I remember Jody Karam, he would say this is that wrestling is training for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Oh, it definitely true. prepares you for life. Yeah. yeah. And no matter how good you are or how bad you are, it's all relative, you know? Yeah. yeah. Plus I think it's one of the sports where it's like, you don't have to necessarily be the most athletic. Like if you put in the work, you re like really put in the work, you're going to get the results. There's a lot of kids that like, wouldn't be very good at a lot of other sports that just didn't have that like athletic ability, but they work their asses off in wrestling and they could be successful. Yeah, absolutely. And you get your time to, to show it and shine, you know, or not, but it's just yeah. you out there. There's nobody to pass the ball to, you know, yeah. it's yeah. so true. hundred percent true. Talk about accountability. Yeah. There's no more accountability than that. Absolutely. Yeah. So nice. Okay. So let's keep it going. So well, I'd always try to blame the ref a little bit. Sure. Oh, sure. I still blame the ref. Are you kidding me? For my <laughs> biggest disappointment. Uh, so, well, let's talk. So you, uh, you made varsity as a senior at 103, right? Dude, what was your weight cut like to be at 103? Brutal? Yeah, it was pretty bad. I think naturally I was like, I don't know, like 117, 118, something like yeah. that. Yeah. And then I uh, cut down and I didn't know if I was going to be able to maintain it. And uh, I did. I was always close, but somehow I did. Dude. And uh, there was really not many other, you know, there were some younger classmen there, but there wasn't really many that were there then. Uh, there were all, all the kids that were constantly at my weight before were all up a weight. Yeah. And 112, 119, 125. So yeah. finally like a slither of hope came you know and the door cracked a little bit yeah so i finally got in yeah it's like it's like the reverse of like if you wrestled if you wrestle in the lightweights it is usually underclassmen so if you're in, you know a senior or junior in the lighter weights you do have like a leg up mentally because back you are, then there was a lot more yeah now there's you don't see it too often but back then there was a quite a bit of juniors and seniors at the lower weights even oh yeah but oh yeah we had people a, used to say like man you're like a full-grown man even though you're at 103 because i had like hairy legs and like, <laughs> it was Dude, funny I, I remember that was our joey radisoni was our 103 oh player. i remember joe radicchioni yeah. i used to call him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. i liked he, him dude he wrestled he was good he was really good he was state qualifier he wrestled yeah. and he wrestled 103 as a as a senior too tough cuts though real tough cuts yeah he had the flow I remember. Oh my right? god! Right, he had the hair, dude. If there was, I mean, that dude's resume was pretty fucking good. I'll tell you that he had a pretty good yeah. resume when it came to the ladies. Let me tell you, he was damn good. I liked him. Nah, Rad, Joey Rad's cool dude, real good dude. Fan of the show, listener of the show. So, what's up, um, Joe? Yeah, what's up, Joey Rad? Um, so, but okay. So then you get to senior year, you make varsity. How are things going? Like you, so uh, very, very up and down, very up and down. Started out all right. Went out to Reno and Mannheim. I think I took third in Vegas. Uh, Reno. National tournament. Yeah, Reno was tough, a lot tougher though. I didn't place in Reno. And then we came home, Mannheim. I took second at Mannheim, and then uh, then I blew some. You know, had some bad matches in front of the home crowd i'll never forget you know pack yeah. gym and yeah. you make some stupid mistakes and that was my first year i wish i had more time you know yeah. more mat time but that was my first year of varsity so i didn't really know how to handle it and uh so it was very up and down i won some big matches then later and uh yeah went into the postseason and what, fought what my we, ass off what were you and, uh what were you ranked going into the postseason i was floating around they would always have the uh area rankings and yeah. i was always like top five but never like in the top two so i was like three to five always yeah and yeah. there was always like a round robin of guys that would you know fluctuate yeah dude but those things i remember those things were never fucking like totally i mean like if there's a guy that's a returning state champ pretty easy to rank him as number one but like when it came to like really ranking them i remember and tom I, I think you remember this 
we were there's so we had a kid on our team named Dave Witt, right? And Dave was a fucking stud, an absolute stud. And they put out the intel- intelligence rankings. That's where our area, right? And they had this kid named D'Archangelo, right? I think it was Anthony D'Archangelo was his name. And they put him above Witt. And Witt had been like regional qualifier. He placed fourth at regions as a freshman, like lost to Jermaine Jones in overtime. Uh, right? I remember like, him. Fucking, yeah. But like Witt has like been really good, like winning all these matches, qualifying for states. And they put this D Archangelo guy ranked above him. And then the next week we were wrestling them in a dual meet and Witt pinned him in 25 seconds, right? <laughs> at their place, right? Just to be like, you know, like shut, like, and Witt's not that type of guy. But I think it did like get under his skin a little bit. Like I am fucking better than this guy, and like like you know. So those rankings are fucking horseshit. Sometimes. That was awesome because we yeah. were, I think we were ranked one in the area then, and yeah. they were ranked second or third. Yeah, and we showed up, and their crowd was like giving us so much shit before the match. I think we beat them fifty four to three. Yeah, and it was we, like we wrecked them. Very similar to. I was uh, the only match that lost. <laughs> <laughs> i've been there i've been there too yeah that was me that was usually me dude that was we were at a uh, a camp in we did like a team camp at lycoming in the summer and we were all hanging out like because they had us in dorms you know and we we're hanging out outside the dorms and there was this other team from like connecticut or some bull out of state you know what i mean like you know, it was connecticut yeah you know those out of state fucking pussies so like there's this out of state team and Tom's wearing a tie dye shirt and they start yelling at him like, well, you hippie, right? Like, wasn't that it, Tom? They called you a hippie or something. We pilot. were, we were like, it was in between practices and we were like, I think throwing a football or something like that in like it was the, soccer. It was at a, it was in at a quad. Like, it was at a college. So we were yeah. just like in like the outside area and so someone starts yelling at us from the windows up above and we're like who's yelling at us and they're saying all this shit and we're like fuck you like we're yelling back so then their whole team comes down and there's like three of us playing football and their whole team comes down and like i think they were trying to like intimidate us like oh oh what are you gonna say now our whole team's here or whatever like this and so i think we started like you know, more of our team started showing up and then a counselor got in the way and said like, yo, you guys get out of here. We ended up wrestling them in a meet that night. Uh, yeah. like coincidentally, and yeah. we kicked the shit out of them. We it only had, awesome. we, we only had one loss and guess who the fuck it was. <laughs> this fucking guy again <laughs> i was the first match i was the first match, dude we were i, I remember pinned kid, i pinned a kid in like 10 seconds and i was like boom yeah <laughs> we dude i remember because me and tom were like we had transferred schools from another school to this school and this was kind of like our first like real kind of gel with the team and i remember everyone was like this is how we fuck like fuck these guys you know what i mean like this really kind of brought the team together of like we're beating the fuck out of these like no like fuck these guys like this is where we show our shit and we murdered them except for me and i lost and it fucking sucked so what are you gonna do hey, it happens. what are you gonna do yeah way, you were Definitely saying happens. it so, reminded you of something chris oh uh, no nah, yeah we, uh our senior year we had a match for number one in the state and we went up to upper perky yeoman and uh, uh, we know them very we them too we did very controversial raucous crowd and yes. uh, you were at upper it, perk yeah and we okay. were like considered i guess to them at least we were considered like city slickers you know yeah and what, uh, uh what year they, was that that 04? was 2003 04 oh three oh four okay, okay. So this, yeah so Devin, i had to wrestle chris Sheets. Devin was gone Devin was gone but kern was there and Schaefer kern was, was there, there and, uh kemmer yep Sheets. kemmer was there she yep all them yeah they all were them, like guys. the class behind mine and yeah. yeah, Marcus Millen uh, got caught and pinned, I think, or something what crazy happened that shouldn't have happened. And they were about to beat us. And uh, it came down to uh, me wrestling Sheets and then Josh Oliver wrestling Kemmer. And I couldn't get pinned against Sheets, who was the headlock machine. Yeah. And uh, he headlocked and pinned me in Vegas. That was the match I lost in Vegas. Yeah. So this was later in the year and we wrestled again. He hit the headlock on me, but I fought it off for like, you know, a whole period. Oof. And I actually ended the match on top, but I, I lost like seven to four or something, seven to three. True. And then I uh, came down to Josh wrestling Kemmer, two of the top guys in the state for yeah. the match. Dude, that and place Josh, must have been fucking uh, red hot. I'll never red forget. The ran, they ran out to LA woman. I'll never forget it. <laughs> it was wild. 
And it was yo, wild. That yeah, is they ran out to the doors when we uh yeah they must have a thing to the doors, doors right light yeah. lights lights go yeah, out I, right maybe that's a Kern thing you know what I mean because Might they be. came out Kern to the was doors very much like that he was a yeah. nut and no, you I mean like Haas him. right or Haas that's what the I meant. coach Haas. right Sorry, Haas. Haas. Oh. Haas is a Haas is a nut he's a, hey yeah. they had a good program I don't know what happened dude they really there, good. But- they yeah we, we, we had a real similar experience though. we had a big wait so anyway so josh is wrestling camera and what happened josh i think he beat him in vegas by like a point josh did and i think he beat him again like it was so hard to score on josh and that camera kid was so good back then i'll never forget it he beat on josh's leg and josh was just he was just so good and josh yeah. won like one nothing i think and we won the match and that was a wild ride home to Easton. Oh, I'll never forget that, bro. When Dude, we the so, bus ride home after yeah, you beat a team and that's like, like an that hour long best. commute. So oh, that was wild. Dude, after a big win like that, dude, because ours. So I actually told the story of this match because this was like our team's coming out party. But I told the story of this match on uh, on Pete's first episode, like, dude, almost a year ago. It was like episode four or something. Or I think it was episode. Yeah, I think it was episode four was Pete's first match because there was. So when you're wrestling, they did the coin flip to see what weight started. Right. Or they picked out of a hat to see which weight started first. I think they had just started that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When ours, ours was, I think, the second to last year where it was started at 103 and ended at heavyweight. Right. So yep. Pete, Pete knew our wrestler, Pete, our, our heavyweight was Pete McCormick, who would end up being like, you know, nationally ranked. He was ranked 15th in the nation. He placed fourth at the Beast of the East, like wow. total stud, right? And it, it, he had never won a varsity match going into this. And we were sophomores, <laughs> right? And this was like, the upper perk was like, the, like when they introduced him, they were like, the reigning, defending, <laughs> section 22, <laughs> district one, southeast regional champion the upper perky omen indians and the whole place starts chanting tribe 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 right and they're fucking go- like the dj's going lights out just one light over the mat the place is fucking going right. you know what i mean like i give them credit they had a hell of an atmosphere oh, they, they made it, dude, they it was awesome it. But our, awesome. ours came down to the last match, and it was, I think it was heavyweight. Whoever won wins the match, and Pete won. It was his first varsity win, was in the biggest fucking match ever. And it was like, wow, you know, that was our coming out party, and we kind of steamrolled too. We lost what team Eastern. was what team was that that you guys were on? North, North Penn. Penn, North Penn, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We and ended we up were, that year, we ended up losing to Easton in, in the, the uh, semis. states. Who is like the 160, 171 pound? Zach Freiling. Freiling. That's yeah. it. Yeah. He yeah. Was 52. He beat uh, Jake Herbert. Na- he beat Herbert? Oh, yeah. Who did, who did, who he beat Jake Herbert as a. Saw, as a, as a as a, oh, Matt Lear. Matt Lear. He pinned yeah. Matt Lear. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Matt Lear, Lear was, was good, too. too. Yeah. Yeah. Matt Lear should have beat. Uh, should it be Galloway that year? Is that what his name is? What was uh, the guy from State yeah, College? Yeah, yeah, Galloway, yes. Yeah, yeah. Joey yes. Galloway? No, yeah. that's a, is that the baseball it was, player? Uh, Nate Galloway. Nate, Nate, Nate Galloway. Galloway. Yeah. Dude, he should have beat him. They I remember the double, that They wanted a double overtime. I remember. Yeah, and he, yep. he, got, he won the toss to be bottom. And I remember, I mean, I hope he's not listening because it's probably a terrible moment for him, but he was like, I've got this match now. I'm the bottom. I'm going to escape. And – Galloway ended up holding him down for. I was so pissed because I wanted Galloway to lose so bad. Yeah, I don't know why. Me too. I just I really remember that. that there was there was a co. I think it was. I think they had three state college had three kids: Hart, Stornolio, and Galloway. And I almost ended up getting in a fight with Stornolio at state at state. Storniolo. I think yeah. he was coaching in college somewhere. Yeah. Whatever. But that been a good <laughs> idea. Yeah. Well, he was no. <laughs> I was wrestling, you know, I was 189 at that point. He was wrestling like one, like he was, well, yeah, it probably wouldn't have been a good idea for me. But, uh, but either way, I was like all hyped up. But uh, it is funny how, like, if you're into wrestling and you know about it, you understand, like, like how, like, intense it can be and how, like, you know, watching, like, even watching nationals and, like, Penn State matches against, like, you know what I mean? Like, the crowd, like, it's so awesome. You, you, you would think because Pennsylvania and, Penn State particularly is so good nationally. We're like the Alabama of, of collegiate wrestling. 
yeah that maybe like the state would start to show it some love and like have it be like no this is fuck all the other shit like let's take on the one that we we dominate at yeah you know i don't know yeah. i guess we do well, sort i mean of, they do but you think it would be on a bigger yeah there's a cult but it's the cult following that makes it massive here it's not like it's like you know like if it was as big as you're saying justin would know about it you know what i mean but like I just anything we've been talking about for the last 10 minutes j-dub yeah. don't want to get into the wrestling no, justin <laughs> would justin would love an upper perk like big match oh Eastern the uh, atmosphere sounds fear. hype the oh, atmosphere yeah. is like like unreal. you were saying is incredible like it, the small Electric. gym and you got the both stands packed there's a yeah. spotlight you're yeah. on yeah, the that's mat. cool the spotlight thing i've watched yeah, so dude, I only recently badass. started watching wrestling i watch it with cabot yeah and so i can ask him a thousand questions because i don't know the scoring or anything like that it is cool as shit to watch yeah it is fun and you watch watching the, penn state versus iowa, iowa. And biggest then, uh, that, yeah, was that was incredible. a good one they did so cabot put out a stat this year so for the college national championships, they did how many wrestlers by state, right? Re- Pennsylvania had 45 wrestlers by like yeah. by state origin, right? Not like state team, state origin. Yeah. Right? yeah, there's a ton, man. ACC has tons of Pennsylvania kids, like oh. NC State, North Carolina. Yeah. Coleman Scott's the head coach of uh, North Carolina. So dude, he was a stud. He won, he was yeah. winning states. Dude, who was the kid? So there was a movie that came out when I was a senior was 03 was I think it was called Reversal and it was supposed to yeah, be like I can't were, remember who that kid was but I, I know yeah, like the white curly hair right there were, but it was, Pleasant Valley I think is the school he went to he was a two time oh, state champ Justin Hibbert I think his name was but uh there was but like I remember like cuz uh, everyone knows for wrestling if you if you do wrestling Vision Quest is the only wrestling movie right yeah and then, i remember when that reversal came out though and everybody was kind of hyped so hyped because they were like this is the next big wrestling movie this is gonna be yeah. vision quest and i was like it's not <laughs> nothing nothing <laughs> it's not at all. vision quest you know vision yeah. quest was like madonna's first like movie yeah yeah oh, yeah yeah it's a pretty wild yeah. stat oh she's yeah, the one dude. singing in the bar like yeah you know yeah <laughs> we've seen it enough to crazy know, you know. for you <laughs> Yo, great it. soundtrack too. Oh, great, loud kill, swing. Yo, killer fucking soundtrack. I remember yeah. me and J- speaking to Joey Rad, we used to listen Only to this song. The there was uh, when he, you remember when he's like, the coach is like, you can't cut the weight. You never can cut the weight. And then he <laughs> runs into the wrestling room and he climbs the peg yeah, board. Lunatic for, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Loud it's and like, swing. Yeah, yeah. There was nothing saying yeah. that you're leaving. Uh, they were doing oh, it. Lunatic mind. Fringe is good too. Oh, a lunatic, lunatic Fringe. Lunatic Fringe is a great there. song. Yo, do you? Is there any way I can share a picture of what the Penn State uh, Stadium looks like when, uh, Here, when there's I'll... a match there? Yeah, go ahead, share away. Do I have to? Share, like... share, no, just you can share your screen. I let you. I just screen. hit share screen. Yeah, yes. share your screen, pick your screen. Uh, do you want sound or no? Do you need sound? No, no, I just want to show a picture. Okay. I and mean, it has a picture. Let me see if this is. If well, if you want sound, you have to check the sound. Does that box. work? Oh, baby. Wow. Dude, how sick is that? That's yeah. Wild. Dude, legit. That's it's nice. Dude, legit. It's a fucking, and like, it, it, it's a, it's a, and I've said it before, it's an organized gang fight is all it is. Right? My dad like, goes once in a while to Penn State. Man, yeah, I would love to go. Dude, look at that. I mean, how cool is that? We should do a show from there. <laughs> he goes would, to would... nationals every year, too. Really? I know yeah. Molly's parents. He's no do joke. Too. Oh, yeah. Wow. My dad's just like Molly's parents. <laughs> I mean, that's, but that's like, see, like, now if that, if that was statewide, that would be awesome. Right. But yeah. like, I think they do it in Western P, maybe, but like, dude, Easton, I'm telling you, you're, and I'm sure there's a ton of parents like, of course we're going to nationals. Great wrestling. Plus, too, like, you're seeing guys that you've seen, you know, because if you watch District 11 wrestling, you know what I mean? Like, you're seeing kids out there that well, are... I would say college has definitely uh, up. come up a level. Uh, Big time. Like, I, I follow and mostly college yeah. wrestling now. Like, yeah. Yeah. back in the day, that wasn't really the case, you know? Dude, but the new rules, like, it's so fast-paced. Oh, you know? it's so like, much better. Dude, remember, I used to love a stalling call. Right, get ahead, oh, get ahead too. of the points. I take a whole period off of the fucking. I want a big call. match off a of stalling call, <laughs> dude. I remember. So okay, 
So let's keep moving. Then. So you're wrestling. I used to we... stall by being aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I would shoot in on a leg and hold it, but they're on yeah. the too now. They call I, that. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys call everything. I'd be that. pretending like, oh, I'm trying to get up from bottom. I got a lead. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Some acting down. goes into it. Yeah. 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 You gotta. But um. So okay. So you. So you would end up. So you guys would end up beating Upper Perk. Yeah. And then uh, you know, we went through. We won uh, district duel. I can't even. I think. Yeah, we won district duels, and um, because back then they didn't take both teams they only took one yeah so we had to win district duels we beat northampton mm -hmm. by like a point or two or something i think yeah. and uh we beat them and then we went to hershey and pretty much you know blew through the competition there i don't think there was much of uh you know yeah. match we had clear field in one of the rounds i remember i had to wrestle matt kyler yeah. and josh had to wrestle brad pataki i remember those were two you know hammers yeah. i think they were both national you know yeah. nationally ranked yeah so who did we, we wrestle tom in the first round saint mary's i want to we, say we, saint mary's we crushed we them fucking too. murdered them wasn't even close wasn't even yeah close. I mean, you guys had a good squad there was another yeah. one uh we where were it was solid like a one, across one the loss board. was a one that loss. was like <laughs> our our uh our big thing was like we had a like solid across like from from three to heavyweight yeah yeah but when and in we the middle wrestled easton it was like they were just more solid <laughs> yeah if i could you yeah know, it no it's like, a good we would absolutely. go like a lot of our matches were like we ended up losing majority but they weren't like blow we wrestled you like guys we at, at quaker town i think we wrestled you guys the one year yeah, no, yeah. Really. And, yeah. Uh, we would so the i've told the story before the next year we'd be wrestling at the quaker town duels and yes. we wrestled blair and i stole a kid from flair's headgear right and they had like custom shit and i wore the headgear and then wrestled the kid that i stole it from and he was fucking not happy <laughs> first yeah like, i'm sure as soon as we locked up i said how do you like my headgear and he's like rrr, 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 rrr. <laughs> yeah so it was great uh, um okay so you're wrestling senior year you have some big matches but you're really like dude first year on varsity is so much it's so much dude it's so much yeah. learning and like getting used to the spotlight and like being out there and like getting used to like, you have to ignore the crowd and stay concentrating and like, and dude, there is a difference between like, cause I remember seeing like the, uh, the last dance documentary and Jordan talking about like when he came back after the retirement and they lost to Orlando in the playoffs, he's like, dude, I'm not seasoned in shape. You know what I mean? Like there's a difference between being in shape and being like fucking mid season shape. You know yeah. what I mean? Like when you're doing three matches a week and making weight three times a week and going through all that shit, like it's, it's tough. Like you really fucking put it on. So you're getting through it and you're kind of finding your stride and then you hit postseason, right? Yes. Individual postseason. Then we go to and districts. Uh, I lost in semis uh, against a good kid, uh, Ray Ward. And then I wrestled back. And I wrestled me uh, and Tim Dog Mantis from Northampton had some, you know, a few hell of matches uh, during the regular season. I beat him on that stall call I was talking about in overtime. And then we met up for third and fourth in districts and I beat him by like a point again. And then uh, so then the next week was regionals because they take the well, top. Hold, hold on. So, Tom. So you're saying so for those listening that don't know what you're saying is wrestle back, which means when so when you when you're wrestling, when you're in a big, big tournament. Right. If you lose a match. Right. Then you go into what are, is called the consolation bracket. And when you're in the consolation bracket, you're wrestling all the other guys. Right. To see who's going to wrestle for third and fourth place. Right. So you lost in the semis, which means you had to wrestle one more match to get to the consolation finals. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you win that match. Right. And then you're in the consolation finals. You win that match. When Tom was a senior, he, we do down here, we did something called sectionals. So you guys just do districts and regions. We did sectionals, districts and regions. So when Tom was a senior, he got second at sectionals. Right. And I told that story, that story about when my dad got kicked out of the gym and then pulled a gun <laughs> on the ref. And then we told, and then the next, next week is districts. Tom goes in and he gets caught in a headlock in the first match and had to wrestle back 
to like wow. from the first re- like dude from wrestling's right yeah. from like wrestling in had to wrestle back and made it all the way and placed third at districts to make it to regions and like it's a harder af- path than winning it dude for yeah. sure that's like the hardest path you know yeah. what Absolutely. happened you know what was funny is that i i had some uh weight issues back in the day mm. i could say and uh i had lost before districts i think i lost like 11 pounds the night before and yeah. so i was i went and i had my match and i just remember being in the match like fuck i'm exhausted i got put on my back and i'm like oh, i could fight this whole thing off or just be like fuck it and so i was just like hey, i'm not eliminated fuck it <laughs> and <I took 10. laughs> so then i was like um and then i was like all right let me see if i can like get my weight down because i knew i hadn't eaten a ton i was like i gotta be close to weight right now you know because i had to make weight the next morning and so i was like got to the point where i knew i was gonna sleep off the weight like i like ran after my match yeah i saw i was like all right i should lose you know i think i lost a pound and a half in in a night usually oh god that's a fucking dream but so it was yeah some wild some wild nights of weight loss i can tell but you that so i knew i was gonna be oh so then i was like i woke up and i'm like damn i'm on weight and i didn't have to run i didn't have to do any of this stuff before which i always had to do before matches yeah. i was running for hours before every match that i had all year my and so <laughs> i uh dad I would the weight and then i wrestled all back it was so funny because i remember i think cabot yeah. i ran in, into him in the locker room and we're like yo dude when you don't have to run man you fucking awesome <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Because when we when we, we lost at States, right, we lost to Easton, we wrestled that day, we came back that night and we had a meet that mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. And so wow. we came back and wrestled that night, but we didn't have to make weight again. Mm-hmm. And I fucking, I killed the kid. I like major, I had all this energy. I'm like, wow, this is great. This is great. I got energy. You know what I mean? So I remember. Those I, early weigh-ins were nice. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, dude. And then, but Tom, there was times like Tom would he would go to school leave and then my dad had an apartment at the time and tom would spend all day at my dad's apartment cutting weight and then my dad would take him drive him to the meet not with the team he would drive him there by himself and be like and then like you know be late (laughs) and then fucking yeah weigh in at the last second and then be a quarter pound over jump rope and then make it yeah yeah Yeah. i always got the half hour you know, yeah. it's like, all right, you got a half hour to make it your quarter. You had the over. digital scale, right? It was yeah. digital then. Yeah. yeah. Digital. There was like once, maybe once that we went to a place where they didn't have a digital mm-hmm. and it was like, you got an extra pound and it was so. Yeah. Awesome. You could mess with yeah. that one. That yeah. was fun. So there yeah. was a couple of times where I was like, you know, I was like, damn, it's going to be close. And I saw a regular scale and I'm like, it might not be as close as I yeah, thought. Yeah, uh, exactly. And then I jumped. Or it was a lot like, worse. Made it. One. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm BC to the East. BC to the East was rough, yeah. but I there was they had like thirty scales in there, and I just remember going from scale to scale. I'm like, which one's the lightest? Which one's gonna get me the where I need <laughs> to go? And I got on the scale, and I was like, which is you know, I, it's my own fault, I guess, because I procrastinated the losing the weight. But I wrestled yeah, one forty five in that tournament. <laughs> yeah, Imagine I wrestled one twenty five. Ugh. But okay. So you you place third at districts and then you make it to regions, which do you have to people don't understand where you're coming from to make it to regions is is like a tough fucking ask, man. That is a really, really tough thing to do. So you make it to regions in your district, which is damn near impossible. And you get to regions. And what happens then? Regionals, I win a few matches, make it to semis again. Uh, I'll never forget that was Saturday morning. I went home Friday night. I was all amped up, feeling real good about myself. Then Saturday morning comes along. Uh, I had to wrestle the same kid, I, I think. I had to wrestle the same kid. I know I wrestled Ray Ward in the regional semis for sure. And um, I was uh, a lot closer to beating him this time than I was the week before. And I was in on a leg to uh, take him down. He did some crazy move to reverse it. He won the match, you know, by like two or three points. So then I'm into uh, wrestle backs again. Yeah. So then as fate would have it, I would wrestle back again to the third and fourth place match. Back then they only took the top three to go to States. Now so, they take four, of dude, course. I remember. Um, so Cabot tells a story. Cabot placed second at regions when he was a senior and he legit it was like, I didn't give a fuck about the finals because I'm going to States. 
exactly. I don't care. That's right. Like that, that was like, it. That, yeah. That was it, my only goal was to get the States. That was it. But and, in, uh, this, in the consolation finals, that's legit make or fucking break. Like winner uh, goes. Yeah. Back then, at least when that match mattered so much, oh, that was, that the was the match wrestling. you wanted to watch. Yeah. That, that was, was like, people would life. come to that and finals, yeah. you know? And, uh, I would wrestle the same kid that I wrestled during the season that I either wrestled the week before from Northampton, Tim dog Manis. And we became good friends over all this. And, uh, but yeah, uh, end of the third period, uh, it was tied and, uh, I was on bottom and I was getting out and you know how, when you hop on and throw a leg, they call it potentially dangerous. Yeah. Well, he did that, but I would, I went right to the ground and I took him right down to his back instead. Like I didn't stay up. Uh, and they, the ref called potentially dangerous when we were on the ground and I had him on his back. Oh, so, so after the move, it like, like he didn't yeah, call after it right everything away. had transpired. Duh. Yep. And uh, so I was like looking up at him, like, "Are you kidding me?" Blah blah blah. And dude, uh, like, because once you point, I was, when you put him on when you put him on his back, like that instant feeling of like, "Oh fuck!" Adrenaline. Yes. Oh, it was adrenaline. Yeah, yeah, total yeah. adrenaline. I got and him. I high. got him. Yeah. And I'm going to states. Blah blah blah. Yeah. You know, all uh-huh. I worked for my whole life. Yeah. And uh, so the call didn't go my way. And uh, but at this point, I was so juiced up amped up i didn't care i was gonna go down get out with like five seconds left didn't happen we go to overtime no takedown either one of us double overtime i got the choice i don't know what a i don't know the coach i looked at the coaches they didn't really give me a specific up or down so i wrote him out before so i picked top and uh i tried to throw in my move that i always rode with which was the spiral ride roll through and yeah. throw the boots in and uh somehow he got out and uh that was it man that was my uh, that was it that was the end of my career bro and uh they sure had a yeah. movie about that shit it's Fucking heartbreaking man. bro it's hard i wrestled that match over and over again in my head all the time my uncle yeah. came in the locker room and told me that he was like you will wrestle that match over and over again in your head every day because he lost in state finals in jersey wow. and uh he had the kid pinned oh man. so Hey, it is what it is. I had a boxing match like that for me, where it's like I remember in it was like the one of the later rounds, and I had the kid up against the ropes and I popped him with my shoulder and I came back with a two. And in my mind, and I smoked him. And in my mind, like it, like I always play back, I was like, God, I just wish I threw like another three and a two. And yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. He, shit, tons of shit. tons of things go through your head, you know. Like yeah. I said, the scars. Yeah, man, keeps your shit. That that's the shit that keeps you up at night sometimes. But what are you gonna yeah. do? What are you going to do, though? It's a life lesson. At the same time, you got to whatever, you know, Dude, move on. It was incredible that you were there. Like, I like the transformation from being, like, taken down by, a, you know, an eighth grader, right? A couple months, like, literally, like, what, like, four months before that, maybe? Five months? To being, yeah. you know, one match away from going to States and the toughest tournament in the state to go there. Like, you should be very proud of what you accomplished, man. And I know it's Thanks. tough. So yeah, what are you gonna do? But either way, so at this time though, you fucking tan, you fucking jacked, you fucking <laughs> slicking it back, you're looking fucking good, right? Back you're, then, yeah, you're fucking doing it up, and you're working at the Palma Pool as a lifeguard. How you was, got it, dude? How was life as a stud athlete, tan, jacked, Italian, fucking doing your thing? at the lifeguard stand <laughs> that was the best job i ever had man i wish you could <laughs> take a career out of being a lifeguard oh god sign oh, me up yo. because yeah. that was awesome yeah it was great man you got to tan and get paid for it and uh you could come you know i don't want to say too much but you know you could come after a rough night and you know it wasn't just, you didn't have to get too crazy sun. yeah yeah i You're had to save somebody anyone. once yeah once but it turned out to be like a test or something. I don't know. Uh, they test you on that shit. Yeah, they would show Makes up like secret, attention. like secret shopper type thing. Uh, what? Se- secret drowner. Who's fucking yeah. job is that? I Fake swear drowner. to God, that I swear to God, that's a thing, dude. Have, that's a have fucking of you, job. Have either of you ever had to call a lifeguard in your life? No. Uh, knock on wood, I never have to. But no, I haven't. Why have you? Full grown man, twenty. I don't know, four years old. I'm in decent shape. With my uh, ex girlfriend's uh, parents at the beach, there's like you know the the beach is a different riptide. Animal. Yeah, oh, yeah. 
Uh, so to, I'm out there having fun. I think I got a boogie board. You know, I'm probably sure. very high. Yeah. And, uh, no way. The, I don't the, believe it. The, yeah. the lifeguard's like, hey, move over. So I start. I don't have a boogie board. I start swimming. You know, I don't get like very far. And like two minutes goes by. He's like, hey, like you got to move over. And I'm like, then I like try to move over and I'm like getting exhausted. I was like, is this how people drown in the ocean? Uh, I like could, I couldn't touch the bottom. And I was like, he keeps like pointing and whistling at me. And I'm like, at a certain point, I just, I'm get frustrated. I just go, then come get me, come get me. I just stop swimming and I like belly out and like, come save me, you know? And I start swimming towards him, like trying to. He gets off the stand and he looks at me like, do I really have to come fucking save you? And I was like, yeah, like I'm done. <laughs> this is all the swimming I can do. And uh, I'm Help swimming me. towards him. He's Help. yeah. I'm like, he's like, move. And I'm like, I can't. I, this is all the swimming that I have inside. I'm of me a now. little high. Yeah. And I'm nervous. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm this is something yeah, yeah. Cause swimming is hard in the ocean. I'm going uh, nowhere. I'm swimming as hard as hard everywhere. Can. I'm not. <laughs> and so I'm trying to like come closer to him. He's now entered the water. But we're like six feet away from each other. I now know this is a handsome man who's in very good shape, and I can now stand. Nice. So now we're just looking at each other, and he just we walk out of the ocean together, <laughs> hand in I hand. Walk, you know what I mean? He might as well carry. Yeah. I wish he, he should have carried, carried you. Me. He should have yeah. just carried you. I walk the thirty feet that I'm away from where, like my uh, like parent in law future. You know what I mean? Like they're looking at me like, did you almost just drown in the ocean? I was like, you see that guy? Very friendly guy. Yeah. Just talking. I know him. Yeah, yeah. You mean oh, old God. buff? Buff the stuff? Yeah. Yeah. You lost that wrestling match, and I laid in bed the night like, did I almost drown in front of these people? I was like, who is this kid? They're like, he's going to take care of my daughter. He can't get out of the ocean alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, yeah, you might want to start looking for something else. Put your resume out there. So That's the only started, time I've she started ever needed banging a the lifeguard. <laughs> I would have. He's that handsome man. He's, he's probably gay. Would have. I got the cool shorts, you know? Mm, yeah. So, speaking of, um, so, lifeguarding. Dude, and it was like, wait, so this baffles me. I knew I knew secret shoppers. I was in the restaurant business, but they have someone who legit goes to the pool, puts on their lotions, and is it a do they pay a kid to do it or is it this this was a kid? This was a kid, which I find even more crazy. But That's I don't know. Nuts. Back back then, I swear this was a thing. I don't know if the city, not the city, but I don't know what governing body does this it has but, to be uh, the insurance company that provides it right i have no idea bro but this was definitely a thing i swear to god and uh yeah we had to put the kid on the um like how old what's on the, the uh i don't know i'm gonna say he was like 11 or 12 something oh, like that geez, uh... he just jumped in and uh acted like something happened to his back or something so we had to put him on a uh on the stretcher thing, you know, the floating stretcher backboard. Dude, what, and, if, like, uh, what if some creep shows up at the pool and he's like, Hey kid, you want to make 12 bucks and an ice cream? Go pretend <laughs> to fucking drown in front of that guy. I got to get these pool chemicals out of here with nobody noticing. Yeah. We got to do a deep dive on that now. I swear. Dude. It's definitely a thing. It has to be. It has to be a thing. That's unreal. All right. Yeah. But you, you pulled him out. You did. Jada, if only you would have known, you could have told your, your girlfriend's family, oh, no, I'm just a secret shopper. Yeah, you got to do this. You, know? you got to make sure that guy's working. You know? I'm just making sure this guy knows what he's doing. I thought he was sleeping. Working Save me. Save yeah. me. Yeah. So, all right. Nice. So, you're – oh. Another dude that I forgot to shout out before on Molly's episode, someone I fucking love him to death. Fucking Benny McLennan, man. I fucking uh, ben love McLennan. man. Benny. What's his brother's name? Justin. 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 Justin's a, didn't he? Man. Justin Played. made a run in state. Yeah. He was like, and then all of a sudden he won districts and regions. Like yeah, he, was he really. People. That's one incredible. of those stories where he just, you know, just blew up. Yeah. Boom. Right. Came like, on. Right at the postseason. It was yeah. crazy. And it was yeah. like. He was good such people, a goofball. Though. They were good all people. they they were getting me into like the uh the pop the uh the punk music. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah, I was big in the emo scene back yeah. then. Bro. Same, yeah. But they were the ones used like, to go to shows. Used me. to do it all. Well, yeah. They were in a band, right? Was yeah, in a band? they had the reunion show. Uh, I don't know, probably four or five years ago, and I went. And uh, there's like probably ten to fifteen of us that know the songs. <laughs> and we jammed out, bro. It was great. It was awesome. Gino was the drummer. The, yeah, Gino the Fortunato. Gino Fortibono. kills it on. Yeah, kills it on the drums. What's the band? No Blitz. It was called. Ah, dude, I remember that. 
Dude, yeah. Yeah. dude, if you can find, which I'm sure you can, find their music online. I mean, yeah. it was literally like, damn. Yeah. I was like, they should be like big. Shout out No Blitz. We'll put a link in the description. Shout out No Blitz. What were you no Blitz say, round table. Yeah. Uh, Gino's, Gino's state championship dude. matches. Dude, we uh, talked yeah, about we, we that talked in the about. pre-show. Yeah. Best like state the greatest finals match ever. ever. It was ever. so good. What was it? Goose Seth bumps. Lisa. Seth Lisa. Seth, yeah. Seth Lisa. When he yeah. stood when afterwards, when he like stood on the railing, was like, yeah. ah! went in the stands. Like, yeah, it was so awesome. Oh, I was man. looking for it. He he gave me the singlet that he won states, and I have it here somewhere. I was gonna bust it out for Put you. Put it on. But... Just wear it. <laughs> 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 nah, Gino's Gino's a man. man. I always Gino's love Gino. Cool. Yeah, Gino's cool. Gino's got what well, we can. We've we've categorized certain people with this thing, and Brandon Hill has it where it's called a hurt fix, right? Where it's like they have a fix. They need to get their fix in hurting people. And if they don't hurt someone, they're going to get their fix. If you, if you saw Gino today, you would never uh, – it's like, you know. Really? Very he's, mellow. Very mellow. He's mellowed out that much. Well, very he's mellow. always mellow, but he was just like a fucking – On the mat, though, he was a – Tiger. Killer. Killer. Apparently, yes. uh, apparently, Cabot was talking to Pal about it, right? And Pal had said he had the strongest legs because he loved to rollerblade. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. But no, nah, <laughs> yeah, you guys so- had those freaking like mountains you got to run up at Easton. That place, Ooh, yeah, like Washington Street Hill. Hill, bro. Yeah, that, is that the one with the McDonald's at the bottom of it? Yep. Yeah. Ma- yeah, many a Sunday mornings. What? Many what? of Sunday mornings were spent on Washington Street Hill. W- with who? The team? The team? Yeah, we would have to meet there. And run? Of course, yeah. What? No wonder you guys are so fucking good. Dude, I couldn't yeah. even drive up that hill without fucking <laughs> getting like That is true. It's hard to drive up it. Yeah. Oh. How how uh how many times did you have to run up the hill? Oh, uh, that I, I don't honestly no, like, don't remember. In a day when they take you there, is it just like three times, four t- like how, how it many wasn't times much. can you run yeah, up? Yeah, it hill? wasn't yeah. much. But we did it. And it was Sunday mornings, so I'll never forget it. Yeesh. I mean, this Jada, this hill is, is legit. Like, is it a hill in Manion? Yeah, oh, way worse than the wall. It's longer. There's way worse than the wall. Longer. It's like way the worse. wall, but like longer. Oof. I don't know how to explain it. You'll but have to we, look it up on Google Maps or something and show yeah. them. Washington just, Street Hill. You could just coast down it and you'd be hitting like, I don't know, 50 at the bottom. You know what I mean? Is uh, I don't know if that's even fast. Okay. You were going fast. You were moving at the bottom. It's intense. Yeah. It was a. Uh, I it's, in an, it's an intense thing to drive yeah. like the oh, first yeah. time you drive it you're like oh this is uh it's like yeah. a roller coaster like yeah. when you're going down it's like ah. yeah you can no longer see that well in front of you you're like this is safe <laughs> yeah, exactly. i don't think this is how cars work <laughs> um i lived in maniac and we get uh, i get hammered there was a bar that would stay open and then my i lived on silver it's only like two blocks up from the bottom and i would bet people and race them uphill and I would then, I, I would do pretty well. I would wake up, you know what I mean? I'd be like, why the fuck do my legs hurt so bad? I'm just doing uphill sprints, hammered at 3.30 in the morning, betting some drunk guy outside. Like, I yeah, can that, that'll hell. do it. <laughs> you challenge a, a random stranger to, I can beat you up the hill for $5, and they'll usually take you up on it. Yeah, I'm sure. Depending really? on the area, for sure. 3.30 in the morning, you can get most people to race you. I guess people are confident in themselves. Coming out of the bar. Yeah. Someone, if you were like, let's race up the hill, I'll beat you. And I was like, I, I probably, I guess I'd probably say, no, you won't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's me. Like, you're looking at me like, you can't beat me up the hill. And like, I'll, I'll smoke you up the hill. Little did you know, I'm a hill. I've been running these hills. <laughs> and I also live uphill. So I just need a reason to run home. <laughs> How many, like, that seems like one of the places where there's like a video of like, if you have a snowstorm or like an ice storm or something where like they just put a camera on that road. And people just slide down and they hit like there's just a pile of cars at the bottom of the hill that just like run into each other. Yeah, I don't know. But we used to have to run it in the snow and ice. I'll never forget that. Jesus. Yeesh. Yeah. Well, so, that's good training. I mean, that is a mm-hmm. steep hill. I yeah. still think. Yeah. That. Had big legs. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you guys all did. So, well, <laughs> sh- shout out to uh, Benny and Benny and Justin McLennan. Love those guys. Um, all right, but let's keep it moving. So, uh, you did like you did lifeguarding all through high school and you're having fun partying, doing it up like kids do. Then you would leave there. Right. And then you would start doing odd jobs for Sal uh, Crivarello's dad. I don't know. Crivalero. Yeah. He wrestled with us. And, uh, 
you. Yeah, we did odd jobs uh, for like the summer, you know, that type of thing. And wasn't really doing much, just, you know, hanging out and working odd jobs really over the summer. And then uh, went back to school finally, you know, after yeah. that went to yeah. uh, NAC. Actually, I went to barber school first and then I uh, went back to NAC. All right. So and then at barber ahead, school, what uh, I mean, you've been cutting hair for how long now? Ah, uh, man, probably about 15 16 years something like that what's the worst haircut mistake you've ever made <laughs> you ever like uh, up? sorry about that there goes your eyebrow you know what i mean or like yeah man i've cut people with the straight razor before <laughs> you know it's bad you know these things happen especially yeah. when you're learning so you just, what you, did you cut yeah. them bad with the straight razor yeah a little yeah. nick it was the it referee from the uh, from the regional final match. Yeah. I wish. Uh, I wish. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So let's hold on. Let's come back to that because there was some noise. So you're working. Uh, so after you get done high school, you're working with your buddy's dad, just doing odd jobs, stuff like that. Then you would end up like after high school, you went to Kutztown and you wrestled there for a little bit, right? Only a few weeks. Only a few weeks. Yeah. Didn't what, last long. What happened? Just didn't. Ah, college wasn't wrestling feeling. wasn't my scene. Nah. Uh, Dude, that's a legit wait, waking, job. Waking up at like 4.30 in the morning and going running Ugh. miles and, and then going to class and then having to go to practice after class. And, Ugh. Uh, Ugh. Just wasn't, wasn't my thing. I felt Ugh. bad because yeah. i like made a commitment to the coaches and stuff but uh you know and you're young and you're doing other things and yeah you know just yeah, wasn't a party yeah wasn't yeah. really working out but like dude it's i mean it you know you're a young kid what could they expect you know what i mean like plus two like if they're gonna start paying college athletes they need to start paying college wrestlers too is that fucking that's a fucking job bro. yeah i see some of them are signing uh endorsement deals and stuff like the big ones dude of course man who's that bow kid Bo nickel right that yeah he could have been raking it in he was a well, fucking... gable stevenson signed with barstool and Did he really WWE. really yeah yeah dude and he's going to wwe i think he's gonna be he's already the, signed uh, yeah he's gonna be the like the uh the under next... the giant memorial uh, yeah is he gonna be Rumble. the next like brock lesnar brock lesnar yeah well apparently brock olympic boy. gold medalist national champion yeah his uh, brother's uh, already in wwe is, is angle the only one that's an olympic champion that or olympian olympic champion in WWE. He, he would be the only olympic champion but i know there's been was angle Olympians. a national champion no so he might be the only national and olympic champion yeah. well maybe yeah. was angle a national champ i don't know, I don't know. he went to didn't clarion. You go to clarion yeah. clarion yeah wasn't but, bob from pa something bob Backlund. yeah who kurt, kurt angle? angle's from pittsburgh, yeah. pittsburgh. Yeah. hell yeah yeah. Sure. yeah good for kurt angle Dude, moon he went to pittsburgh. moon what's oh moon moon high school high school yeah uh, moon pa whatever fucking moon river <laughs> so okay so like you you're you get done like wrestling or wrestling it cuts down and then you started coaching the midget wrestling program that you came up in at at Palmer right and you helped yeah. like the you did like the like the younger kids and stuff and then the you new also kids, yep. and then you also helped out at Pius the tenth too is that yeah. right yeah yeah and that was all fun and that I you know had a lot of fun coaching seeing how far the kids would come along during the year and uh, yeah. Yeah, and I wish I would have stuck with that, but just uh, not enough time in the day for everything. Yeah, wrestling's fun when you don't have to make weight, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's exactly. a lot more fun when you're telling someone, "Hey, you got to make weight," as opposed to having to make weight. Dude, nothing worse. Hate it. Um, okay, so then after you were, you know, like you're you're working there, like you're doing that stuff with the midget program and five tenth, and you start being a waiter in an Italian restaurant in Easton, right? And you're like. You're like mid to late twenties at this point, right? Yeah. First, I went to barber school in the city, though. I thought okay. I wanted to live in. I thought I wanted to live in the city, New York. And, city. Uh, yeah, and I okay. would take the bus every day to a barber school in Manhattan. Oof. That I'm pretty sure was a like a Russian organized crime front thing. And oh, uh, that's awesome. There. So I used to sign in and walk around the city all day and 
they will give you credit for it, whatever. And uh, they didn't teach you anything how to cut. No, no. And I was kind of like, um, like you could have stayed and like, you know, done stuff, but I was kind of with some skeevy people coming through the doors and stuff. Mm. And I was kind of like, eh. so I was kind of, yeah, not. How not long was it. the course? It was like five, six months, something like that. So what? I did that every day for every weekday for like five or six months. I would take the bus. It cost a lot of money too. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so then I, whatever you want to call it, graduated from there. And uh, I remember I went to look at an apartment in New York City with my parents and my mom walked in the door and saw I was like rat infested, you know, disgusting. And she was like, you're not living in in yeah. new york city blah 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 so i said is whatever your, I is went... your mom like a typical italian mom oh yeah very much so man yeah. <laughs> very yeah. much so non-stop yeah. yeah and the cooking and all the works and oh, i love her best. love her to death shout out yeah. mom yeah fan of the show um... listen to the show <laughs> but oh she listened to molly's episode that's awesome thank you oh yeah yeah molly's episode was a hit she's awesome can't wait hey, to i always try mom. to promote my my buddies hey beautiful you know what we should do we should have we've done like a bunch of round tables we're doing a 44 round table we did an end of round table we did an lc round table henzo gracie round table we should do an easton round table right like get you molly who else like who else would be good i used to know this puerto rican kid from easton who was wild yeah yeah see if i could find him (laughs) i don't remember i don't i can't even think of his actual legal name what'd you call him (laughs) God, I used to work with him. I can't even think of his was name. He, he was like Fernando. He was like 300 pounds, but had a Honda Civic. And like you would see it like lean when he got in, but he had like a K motor in it, which I didn't, I still don't really know shit about cars. Sure. It was just the fastest car. Like it was just, it made no sense, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, like, yeah this car would go so is. much faster if you didn't weigh 300 pounds. I, I don't know if remember <laughs> Chris his name cuts now. his hair. It's no big deal. Um, yeah. Right. All right. But no, think about that. Cause if you like, you know, if we could get fucking you, Molly, and Benny McLennan, <laughs> the show. yeah, we could set something up. Hey, man, love it. Nice. Think about that, though. That's serious. For real, I want to, I would love to get an Easter. I got plenty table. of other business people that would love to, you know, do it. Be on love. your show, period. So hey, you let spread, me know. Dude, let them spread the word. Let them know. I'll book anybody, man. I'll book them. Yeah. All. I'll I book them. We're tons to, of business people, bro. We're trying to expand our audience, which is growing every day. But God know. bless. Hey. We're big in Easton. Gosh. Hey, yeah, man. Hey. Dude, we're just big demographic. Expand. Hey, we're trying to expand wrestling. our territory, brother. That's what we're doing. You know, we hit, like dude, it. we do great. We would do great in Easton as a demographic because we hit big in the 18 to uh, 18 to 50 demographic. Right. We hit big on that across the board, but we do monster numbers in 50 plus. We are monster numbers in the 50 plus demographic just really? to let you know oh yeah wow because they love how we fucking talk because we're not <laughs> fucking like we'll say male 50 plus female 50 plus. oh my god the carson matthew i can't stand the carson right that's what we get from the <laughs> female 50 plus but from yeah. the male 50 plus like fuck yeah fucking say how fuck it is you know <laughs> so either way um okay so you're working at a waiter at this restaurant in east well yeah no i i did i didn't want to go uh, oh, oh yeah my yeah, mom so didn't want me to go, live in the she apartment she goes into the, okay my bad so yeah so your your mom opens the door in new york city she sees five Moskowitz and his whole fucking family and johnny cockroach and his all his cousins and she fucking goes bah, what's up yeah you're not living here. No way. <laughs> so bring me home to Pennsylvania. And uh, Did so she call you Christopher. Yeah. So she's yeah. a Christopher. When she's like, when it's emotional. How am I going to make you your Sunday gravy with these rats here, Christopher? <laughs> she doesn't have that accent. <laughs> okay. All right. So, sorry. Um, shout out. Shout out, mom. Shout out, Deb. Fan show. Listen um, show. Long time listener. <laughs> um so anyway uh i try to go to uh take the test in pennsylvania and the hours it was like you know they had to have proof or something from new york so i was seeing a girl at the time who lived in uh bayonne and uh so i was in bayonne the one night and i figured let me go over to new york and see if i can get this from the school 
like a diploma or a certificate. Yeah. And uh, they lost it. They didn't have it. There was no record of me. Nothing. So wasted all this money, all this time. For nothing. nothing. Thank God. Uh, this was later down the line. Thank God. But a few years later, I decided I wanted to, you know, really do the barber thing. And uh, thank God a buddy of mine was opening a school in Bethlehem, which is like right next to Easton. And, mm. and uh, yeah, he, um, you know, I got enrolled there and he helped me out and, you know, that's how I got my so, Pennsylvania hours. So, okay. So to be, to get your barber certificate kind of gimmick, you have to do like a certain amount of hours and pass like a testing kind of thing. Yeah. Written test and, uh, you know, cutting hair and right. the shave and all that good stuff. Jesus. And then, so you went up to New York to fucking little Moscow up there. You went to the fucking, you know, the, the, the sons of mother Russia fucking barber school and you went every day for six fucking months. You signed in. You didn't do much, but you fucking signed in. <laughs> I was there. You, yeah, you were. You made. Hey, you made an effort. And then yeah. when you went back up saying, "Hey, I need my certificate. I'm a graduate," and they said, "Sorry, no, no certificate for you." <laughs> yeah, they were. They were. They were dicks too, you know. And it wasn't. It was not a pretty sight. He beat me straight up. <laughs> like yeah, you want much. certificate you down. end up in the river yeah don't splash the pot <laughs> i think they they thought they didn't have to answer to me or anything because i was like a little white boy and you know i mean i don't think they would have answered to anybody any color boy they don't give a shit yeah you know true so yeah okay. that was that so wait so but there was like a time period between the Russian barber school and the other and the real yeah. barber school. So in that time period between then, that's when you're at the Italian restaurant in Easton. Right. Right. You're right. And, and you're there like mid to late 20s and you get a job there. But then you would end up getting the whole squad a job there. Right. Yeah. My good buddy, Mike Biasi, he wrestled at Easton. Uh, my sister and my cousin who wrestled at Phillipsburg. Shout out to uh Bobby. Easton Easton the big rivalry. Ooh, that's the yeah. oldest rivalry in the whole state of Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> it's the biggest uh, rivalry. Um, yeah. Uh, what was something that always seemed cool was that bonfire. The bonfire yeah. every year. Thanksgiving, man. Thanksgiving yeah. Day game. What? What are you There's talking about? There's a bonfire that uh thanksgiving eve every year at easton high school and then we play peberg the next day but the oh, bonfire wow. is massive huge and if you're driving on 22 and you don't know any better you think there's just a huge fire because it's it's that you know, big just a massive oh, fireball right. oh, what they, huge. they throw couches in there and shit really yeah, oh dude no oh couches like, like junk for multiples. the whole year yeah we go around that's a big thing all the seniors go around you split up into teams and you go pick up wood and furniture and from all over the city and then you try to make the biggest bonfire every year and ours was pretty damn big my senior year and damn. then you camp out you camp out uh next to the bonfire the night before the bonfire to make sure Peberg doesn't light it and uh so everybody gets to sleep out it's a big thing i don't know if, i think they still do that and uh then you have the bonfire the night before and everybody from easton if you were away at college if you're from out of the state uh everybody meets up at the bonfire and then everybody goes to the bar or whatever See, you want that's do. like some cool community shit though like you know what i mean like that, that and then you wake up and go to the game but that builds like a sense of community you know what, what i mean what about it's November, you know. How cold was it the night you're sitting oh, out before freezing, you, bro. before you freezing. Light the fire? You need, you need to freezing. find a you need to find a honey to keep you warm. You know what I mean? Nah, they had chaperones there. It's uh, you mm. really couldn't do anything like that. I remember, we, I remember playing football at like two a.m. with Mikey Rogers. I'll never forget that. Shout out, Mikey Rogers. That's another stud. Fucking that's shout out, man. Did God he bless win him. his freshman year? Sophomore sophomore i think i think him and this i think the other guy's name is Jarrett king and they were both sophomores wrestling Whew. in the state final Connellsville. yeah all right so damn i didn't know the fucking bonfire was that big that's pretty fucking cool so but either way so you're working you're working at the italian spot you're doing your thing like i was there. going to uh northampton community college got my degree in hotel restaurant management got it uh parlayed that from the Italian restaurant, went to the Sands Casino was opening in Bethlehem. Nice. So I was 
I went to work at the Sands and uh, I was at the pizza place for a little bit. Then I went and uh, that was the best job was the pizza place. Then they wanted to be fancy and moved me to Emeralds. And I worked at Emeralds for like five or six years and uh, met him a few times. Yeah. All right, guy. Um, but Dude, very. Uh, I, uh, I worked at Wawa, right? And when you work at Wawa, they put you through like an employee training, right? And they show you like this video on how they make their sandwiches. Because everything's like, you know, it's three tomatoes and three pieces of cheese and fucking two things of turkey or whatever the fuck it is, right? And they're putting me through, like they're putting you through this instructional video. And the guy that they had, this is our instructor, Emeril Wawazi. <laughs> Oh, man. lost it like <laughs> emerald lagasi but wawazi yeah yeah like wawa wawazi <laughs> you know was so i was like this is fucking great instead of bam he says boom yeah boom. He i'm says, gonna have wah, to wah. Uh, yeah i'm gonna have to deep dive that one later too yeah emerald, emerald wawazi. wawazi so wawazi. okay so you're working at emeralds right and you're yep. doing like a bunch of different things here right? yeah like, i was uh in, on, in a casino though so like to work in a casino as like, you're not like, I know you're not like a dealer or whatever working on the floor, but is there still like a bunch of regulations for you just to work in the casino? Back then the deal was you had to have a gaming license, but you couldn't gamble uh, at the casino back then. I think food people can now. I'm not sure. I, I honestly don't know, but back then uh, you couldn't gamble there and um, you had to have your gaming license at all times on you to even be on the floor. How do you get a uh, gaming was, license? A, you ever see Casino, the movie? Yeah. Yeah, From well, that was a, the big thing was he couldn't get a gaming license because of his background. You know what I mean? So they just yeah. run a background check and, you know, you either get it or you don't. Like, they'll give so, it to you, like, then you don't have to, like, mail the state or something. It's just like, all right, here's our casino gaming license. See ya. Basically, I guess the state oh, yeah. probably controls it. I don't right. know. Yeah. I'm sure the state's got their fingers in that. But, of course. Yeah. Of course. So, so yeah, okay. I was working there. Uh, I was like a reservation management guy dealing with the books and then uh, decided to be a waiter because you made more money, honestly. Yeah. Um, it was like fine dining there. And nice. uh, yeah, but the people were a little, it was a little stuffy. Yeah. Uh, you had how many, both uh, I was going to say, how many people said BAM to you? Oh, uh, BAM. Well, they opened another restaurant called BAM. It was Burgers Did and that? More. BAM. <laughs> burgers yeah. and More. Oh, I didn't even know that. That's hilarious, though. <laughs> Yeah, Good I think it's Emerald. still there. I think it's still there. Is he still around? What's he doing? Then he opened. Did you ever meet Emerald? He opened. Uh, yeah, he opened Emerald's Italian then there, and then he opened Emerald's Fish Place there. He had a bunch of places there. Dude, what's and, the uh, what's the British guy's name that you screams he, on? Or uh, Gordon Ramsay. More Gordon Ramsay. Ramsay. Yeah, dude, Emerald is like getting double teamed by Gordon Ramsay and Bobby Flay. No one gives a fuck about Emerald anymore. Emerald was getting Guy twisted Fietti. back then, bro. Dude, Guy Fieri, yeah, pop. flavor tone. Dude, it's Guy Fieri. Fieri. He would walk around with a bottle of wine all night, Emerald. Just really? Boom. Yeah, was he pulling Bam. some was he pulling some bitches? Emerald? I, think he got I was just that was where I was going next, bro. He was like, yeah. yeah. Emerald was doing <laughs> Fucking check work, his bro. resume. <laughs> Wait, Chris, you guy. seem to know uh, the. Sh Do you just know them? Or are you uh, are you into cooking a lot? He's Italian, I, Tom. It's, I mean, I, we're I cook, Italian, but not man. like that. And uh, I went for a hotel and restaurant management is what I went to school for. So it was like yeah. front of the house stuff more yeah. so. Yeah, is that fun? That kind of stuff, like the back then, it was exhilarating. It was. Uh... Were you like planning on like you know? All right, we got rock stars here. There's a dead hooker in a room. I'm gonna step in and take care of it. It's like, is that what you're imagining when you go to school for hotel and restaurant management? Right, Donald. I just wanted to ultimately have my own place. That was yeah. what I wanted. And then the casino thing just kind of popped up, and everybody was like, "That's a good opportunity." Boom, take yeah. it. And uh, so ultimately, though, did it pay I, I well? Was, yeah, it paid great. I had great benefits. Yeah, you know, making yeah. good money. Yeah. blowing it like an idiot because i was young and yeah. um dude the amount of money i blew in my 20s i fucking like i could, I could buy shoot my stuff oh, god bro bro i mean i wouldn't don't get and i wrong. was living at home i yeah i wouldn't change it for the world like the my 20s and the experiences and everything because you know whatever <laughs> but the amount of fucking money i blew on like partying and girls and like fucking all that man it's legit like i should be shot right? i lived like, at home yeah i lived at uh, home yeah. and my mom opened my i was like i don't know 
20 and my mom opened my w2 and she like stormed into my room and she was like what is this i was like i don't know i think that's the thing you got to pay taxes with i don't know she's like you made more money than i did this year what did you do like how much do you have saved up i was like i have like 27 dollars like what do you want <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> yeah dude also was, mom yeah. it's illegal to go through my mail fucking yeah. <laughs> look out call the cops my mail is still at my mother's house yeah like it's still her at she just texts me every time i get mail like change your address no that's funny i never have my, it i use my mom's too and she's moving soon so anymore. whatever that's all that it will forever be that address i don't care who lives there yeah it's the worst changing your address fucking a so okay you just go to the the post office and fill no, oh is that what you do tom huh is that what you do you just go to the post office like a reason know. to talk to me like you know i've, I've had to do it <laughs> no. maybe you do know yeah my mom loves <laughs> telling me could, i think you could do real. it online <laughs> i think my Hopefully. mom my mom loves saying like you know being like tom hanks you know like you got mail yeah fucking loves it you got some more mail hey, at our you house come over and get your mail you got your mail here yeah. you gotta come over and pick look it up. serious is everything okay yeah. look serious what's I'm this I'm thing from everything. Penn dot oh my god yep I she hear everything and then she goes hear- you got a letter and i go what's it about she goes do you want me to open i go i know it's already open just tell me what it says <laughs> i don't know why we're <laughs> pretending like you didn't open it on the way from the yeah. mailbox she's making the it a sound like <laughs> Right, let me open it. <laughs> yeah, as soon as she sees, like, oh, this is interesting. Yeah. It makes a weird sound. I'd be like, open it. She'd be like, you have an arrest warrant. I'd be like, oh, you opened it that fast. Yeah. Thank she, God mine doesn't open mine. Yeah. You should, <laughs> you, <laughs> it'd be great if your mom, like, if you had like a great uncle that was sending you birthday money every year and your mom's just like, yep, this is mine every year. Thanks, <laughs> Uncle Junior. You know, whatever. <laughs> so, all right. So let's keep it moving. So you're working at the casino and you're doing things there, but you're still not like totally fulfilled. So I was um, going to the barber school down the street at the same time. That's when yeah. I started that whole thing. And, but like, so was, was, work, what was, was the atmosphere like at Emeralds? Because like, it seems like it would be stressful, right? It was very um, pretentious, like a yeah. uh, lot of stuffy people come in, but then you also get a lot of, you know, bottom Whis- of the barrel type yeah, people that are just Tango coming. at the fucking yeah. casino. Yeah. Coming on comp dollars and uh, that, dude, there so was you no get... short of that. And when I when I remember my time in Easton, there was no short of some fucking whiskey tango up there, brother. Jeez, yeah, Christ. yeah, a lot of that going around. Yeah. But then you would have a lot of people coming from the city, which they'd be very, uh, you know, hoity toity, pretentious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are people aware of what whiskey whiskey tango means. Matt? I mean, okay. for our listeners that don't know, J Dub, whiskey... do you know what whiskey tango no, means? I, yeah. I, yeah, just I knew you were sitting there. It. White trash. It white means trash. white trash. Yeah. WT whiskey tango, you know. White whiskey track. tango foxtrot. Yeah. Yeah. What's foxtrot mean? <laughs> <No idea>. <laughs> <laughs> Foreign trash. I've heard no. it before. <laughs> <laughs> no, whiskey, yeah. Whiskey tango means white trash. And there was, I mean, there's a plenty of whiskey tango. I mean, to be fair, plenty of whiskey tango on Lance Hill, too. So all right. So you leave Emeralds and like you're kind of doing your thing at the barber shop, like getting your real barber's license this time, not from. Yes. Fucking yeah. I, le- so- I left the, uh, the casino because uh, I wanted to get a casino host job, which was like you dealt with the players. I wanted to go out onto the floor and I wanted to take care of the players and uh, did all this stuff. You know, you had to do and um, they just took the people that were coming in from Las Vegas. Like they just transferred jobs uh, over there and uh, they just then- un- undercut you completely. Yep, and then I had a falling out with the manager at the uh, restaurant, and uh, I put my two weeks in, and they were like, "Nah, we're just gonna let you go now." And such a uh, dick move. Yeah, I, I think I cried a little bit, man. I was a little it's emotional. Such a I dick remember. move. Yeah, oh, yeah. Chris. I definitely cried. Yeah, You're an yeah it's guy. upsetting. It's upsetting. I, I was. No, very, and very you were emotional. respectful enough to give them the two weeks to be like, "Hey, like I'm leaving because I hate it, but I'll give you Why two more weeks." Why didn't they want you, Chris? Why didn't they want? Uh, they those said two I was ways? a. Uh, they said I was a, like a rebel rouser. Like I was creating too much, uh, you know, Good. drama. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. You're hanging around because I stood you're, up. You're... I stood up for the little guy. Yeah, fuck yeah. You weren't. Well, you they. You knew they were a bunch of fucking punks. You know what I you're mean? You're going around here. You're listening to too much of that no blitz music. You're going. <laughs> <laughs> You yeah, keep, didn't you like keep it. calling him Emerald Wawazi. It's like, yeah. Yeah, you son of a bitch. No. Uh, yeah. The tagline's bam. It's not boom. It's bam. 
so okay so so then you... ultimately uh, that's gone i leave there and then that's when everything kind of shifts in life and i get serious about you know cutting hair and i got you my license cut hair when you were younger just to like because you like doing it you know yeah, just... like i think i remember that you were cutting hair like probably yeah. doing it on the side i started it in like 2005 or six i remember no, i gave my two little cousins you know were my first victims yeah and then uh yeah then you know i went to the barber school got my uh license finally and then uh this guy this old italian guy leo owned the shop in easton he was looking to retire my aunt was a caretaker at the time she took somebody in there for a haircut they got to talking and uh he said you know tell your nephew to come down and i went down me and my dad went down talked to him and we met like one time had some wine had some you know bread and olive oil we broke bread and uh sure. that was it he sold me the shop and Bene. Yeah. nice that dude bellissimo dude that's awesome man no good he wanted he wanted to pass it on to a fellow see me and tom didn't know found out this yeah, year Yeah, we just were recently italian well recently, what's lavelle it's irish irish our uh, dad's our dad see lavelle's a, one of those ones that could you don't know yeah yeah, if it people, had an O at the end of it, Lavello yeah. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you never know. Lavelle you could have dropped it. People confuse Lavelle <laughs> for French a lot too, which was Lavelle. very. That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say it could be French, it could be Ugh. Italian, it could be Irish. Yeah, like Lavelle you. Uh, finding yeah. out that you're Irish this year, I also found out how to spell your last name this year. Oh, so cool. look at that! Bell it, sick. Bell check. L E V. I can. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah. uh, LA. I can't spell it, but I saw, how it's LA. You saw how it's spelled. It's L A V E L L E. Yeah, for all those Your kids, salami in my phone. Hey, hey. you're J Dub in mine. Oh, oh my gosh, that's so, so cute. cute. So, but um, this magic moment. But okay, so you get you get to talking to Leo, right? Leo, hey, Leo, uh, Leo. Yo, this is Chris. This is shout out to Leo. Too. We want you to Total. come down here. We want you to take over the shop. You're gonna give out some haircuts. Here, here. You want some? You want some olives with that? You want some olives with some vino? You're gonna run the numbers. You're gonna <laughs> run the numbers for Bruno. Yeah, he listen, speaks very. Luca uh... Brazzi's gonna come in. He's gonna tell you what to do. <laughs> yeah, no, he wasn't that type of guy. He was just a good immigrant yeah. Italian, and he spoke very uh, broken English. And I love him to death. He's like, yeah. uh, you know, sweet old gentleman is he, is he still around yeah he's like 93 still walks miles a day still plays bocce ball he's living in uh, florida he's uh, living the life bro he looks like he's in like his 70s not even dude he must yeah. be slaying it down there. he's a tank he's, he's a tank laying it down there yeah, Fuck yeah. great guy great yeah. guy no dude so, shout out for him so okay so yeah. you get the shop everything's going good right not get... really at first it was okay. rough man it was well, rough a lot of what... people didn't like the transition oh, okay you know yeah uh, like who's this young punk this yeah, little dago yeah. bastard yeah. a lot of that dude yeah. a lot yeah. of Who that is this? i mean Who this guy this was video? uh this guy had a cult following man he yeah. was a legend yeah. and um i was too to you know my own detriment too i was like a punk at the time too you know young yeah. thought i knew everything and yeah so you know it just wasn't a good combination i was still partying a lot and like you know wasn't very reliable didn't know Ooh. what i was getting myself into yeah but then you work through that stuff yeah. and you know you realize you got bills this is a chance to make money um mm-hmm and somewhere along the line you just figure it out and you know within yeah, you the first jesus meeting and it's like yeah. yeah within the first year you know things got rolling i figured it out yeah. everybody now grew to like me and uh i then brought my own people in out on top of his people so it was like combining two businesses yeah um and it worked out do you have like the spiral pole thing out front the barber pole yeah fuck yep. yeah love that yeah so yep. nice okay so you get your shit figured out with leo and like you get you're getting going you're dude this is we'll talk about this too but you're doing the shop the shop's running good you're playing your bocce ball at the italian bocce club doing that and then yep. all of a sudden you get a fucking curveball and you get hit with lyme disease right? yeah i mean they don't even really know what it is man honestly i say lyme disease because people you know can that's what they originally thought it was. And it still might be that, but they honestly don't know. 
Yeah. You know, these the doctors, I don't know. I don't know. So but whatever it is, is kicking my ass and Still? it's slowly getting a little better. Okay. Uh, I used to run three miles a day, like multiple times a week. And yeah. I couldn't, I can't even run down the freaking block sometimes now without, yeah. you know, just, my legs just, are shot after just, working all day, especially I'm on yeah. my feet all day. Yeah. So that sucks. Cause it's working out was like a huge thing for me. And right now at least, uh, you know, kind of doesn't happen after working all day. Forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Plus do like your, like, I always thought like your hands and your elbows and your forearms, like, God, it's gotta be like, like I see yeah. that, like, that's like, even think about that makes my hands hurt. But... That's how I first noticed the uh, problem was my uh, shoulders were, you know, got real weak and I could feel it when I was cutting hair and then yeah. it went to my legs and uh, they think it's lying. Who knows? I don't know. I haven't. Where's, did they really... find the ticks though? Like what the hell? Yeah. I got tons of ticks in my yard. So that's why they, oh, that's why they shit. think that yeah man that would really tick me off yeah bada boom okay yeah the lime test they're not really uh there's like they're vague you know like yeah you you test positive on a few strands of this and you need multiple strands to test but then some doctors say you only need to test positive for one of them it's a mess it's a mess yeah the medical you know i I don't even want to get into all that but yeah, yeah it's it's a mess so well you're fighting through it man i'm glad to hear you're getting better that's great and dude that's fucking tough dude that's fucking tough so we wish you nothing but the best but i want to talk about this we're talking bocce so tell me about the bocce you are so into bocce that your dad built a bocce court at your house so you can practice your botch yeah in the basement is that how big you're like you take bots pretty seriously well yeah see to me The uh, the club, the Italian club had indoor courts, so that was like the first okay. thing I, I really learned yeah, how to play yeah. on. So then I got the idea when I bought my house. Uh, it was like, yeah, my basement's not really doing nothing. Like, what the hell am I going to do in the basement? I can't – it's yeah. like not the, – the ceiling's too low to, like, fix it up and everything. So I was like, screw it. I'm just going to get my dad to build me – help me build a uh, court, a bocce court. And I got turf, and I laid it down, and uh, I got railroad ties for the sides. Yeah and uh yeah it's pretty sweet it's not it's Dude. not big it's not big so it's like just kind of practice hey, but during but you get COVID, your sharpshooter you know what i mean yeah yeah exactly and during covid when i was given a lot of basement cuts um people, people were like playing love it. Oh, yeah loving it bro it was Wait, like so the waiting you, thing you you would have people come over to your house to get a cut during covid yeah i mean yeah. i probably shouldn't but yeah well, i mean yeah, murderer well, who the fuck cares? I, I mean, like, you weren't spreading it. <laughs> Screw them. Fuck them, man. You had to make some fucking money. Fuck them fuck is them. right. Yeah, Dude, that's I, some bull. your own risk. You, you, they yeah, they exactly. Everyone, everyone that came to your house signed an affidavit. So fuck off. It's past the yes. statute of limitations. So anyone can go smoke a fat one. That's fucking, yes. you know. Our good governor decided to lock it down. <laughs> <laughs> he locked it down Do you hard. even know the name of our governor? God. Wolf. Is it Rendell? Uh, Wolf. Tom Wolf. Dummy. <laughs> he looks exactly oh, like my dummy. stepfather. Oh, dummy. Dummy. Tell me all the governors of the 50 states, huh? Fucking oh, get yeah, dummy. God, I just Cuomo? Want... Yeah. Well, it used to be Cuomo. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Ted Cruz. Kidding. Uh, <laughs> but is Barry Sanders I, I, a good one? I know the one Arnold of my state, particularly in the last <laughs> Jesse Ventura couple of years when he's all been doing all these lockdowns. <laughs> hey, we don't talk about politics on this show. All right, that's right. You I told me that. to name all the fifty fucking governors. <laughs> governors. Well, you can't. So there you go. Governor? I can name the one of my state. That's all I care about. Well, I guess that you don't know much if you only know one. Good for you, Tom. You didn't Good even know you. yours, Matt. You didn't even know. Well, I don't want to know. Politics isn't allowed on this show. All right. No politics. I, have I should have never brought up the COVID cuts. <laughs> as soon as you know, everything is politics. Yeah. All right. So, okay. So, well, dude, we're coming to the top of time. I'll tell you what, man, Chris, after like we had Molly on and when she told me you were interested in doing the show and I booked you and like talking to you, man, and even like the pre-show is great catching up. Like you're a good fucking dude, man. And I'm really happy to have you on the show. And like, this has been fucking awesome, man. And I know we're usually in agreement with this, me and Tom and Justin, but if you'd be willing, we'd love to have you back on the show. Oh, bro, it was, it was great catching up with you guys, you know, after 20 years or whatever it's yeah. been. And uh, yeah, you guys are my kind of people, you know, hey, I can talk right to you. back at you. Sorry like about nothing. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah well. I will say in this, it, man, you are a sweetheart, dude. It's kind of, it's nice talking to you like, 
seriously you seem like the nicest guy i ever met in my freaking life you know mm. yeah yeah, I have a I have a little temper, but yeah, sure. it doesn't get doesn't go there too often. So uh, us you. Italians it. have our temper. Yeah, you know what I mean, us we're charming Italians. when we need to be. Yeah, but us Italians, you know, I mean, when I say us <laughs> Italians, I mean us. So, us, I, us, yeah, we, I'm we, I'm we. I'm Italian. You know, we. ask ask my uh, ask my dad my granddad whoever he is. So, uh, <laughs> Butch. <laughs> Butch. Old, old Butchie Palermo. Old so. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so let's keep it moving so we're coming to the top of time so two things one definitely want to do an eastern round table so for all you easternites listening to this episode when it airs hit us up on twitter and tiktok at, or hit us up on twitter at working peapod or email us at work at gmail.com if you want to be on the eastern round table we'd we'll love to have you i think it would be great um, but Chris, before we get out of here, is there anything you want to say to your adoring fan base before we take off? Nah, I love everybody. Uh, you know, everybody in my life, everybody's helped me in one way or another. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. You put me on the spot, but nah. you know, Amen. people have helped me out a lot along the way and yeah. you know, I'm nobody. I was nobody in wrestling. We just went over that and I feel kind of weird talking about it because nah, it's not true. I, was I liked it. I like a true. heartbreak story. I liked it. It's not true. It was man. basically, that was why we did it. it I feel it was for the heartbreak. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dude, you but it, it's like, not, uh, you see it as heartbreak. I see it as such an accomplishment, right? Like, dude, I remember you outside the fucking garage, man. Like you were down and out and you had, dude, you, our dad used to have a saying, you have two choices. You have the hard right choice or the easy wrong choice, right? And you could have been a quitter and done the easy wrong choice real fucking quick, real easy, and like done that. And who knows what have, would have happened to you then? You know what I mean? But you did the hard right choice. You fuck, you, you nutted up and like, dude, it made, like it's an unbelievable accomplishment you made going from like one year on varsity like how many people wrestle one year of varsity and place fourth in the toughest region in the state like you should be very proud yeah. of what you accomplished yeah it's not, not to mention feet. just because you were fourth at the region you probably would have been fucking fourth in the state you know what i mean yeah so yeah you definitely like... would have placed for sure you know but some of my favorite athletes didn't win anything and you just love them for the effort yeah yeah shout out I... mick foley Shout Absolutely. out Charles Barkley. Shout out, Shout out Brady. Reza. Dan Marino. My Shout guy. out Marino. Yeah, there's so many. Shout yeah. out Damian Tomlinson. Yeah. Barry. Yeah. Yeah. Shout, Shout out, out Razor Ramon. Fan of the show. Listen well, thank you, guys. Nah, yeah, man. Don't... Absolutely. R.I.P. Scott Hall. Yeah. R.I.P. Reza Ramon. We had a Razor Ramon Reza. tribute show recently, and it's... uh. I saw that. Yeah. Well, hey, hey thanks for watching. Appreciate that. Um, But yeah, love Razor. So... No, Chris, thanks for coming on, man. This is great. Thanks for having me. Of course. Tom. J Dub, any... nice to meet you, bro. <laughs> it was very nice to meet you. I enjoyed this thoroughly. Yeah. Tom, <laughs> anything you want to say to the allegiance of the Captain Jerkbeard Faithful before we take off? Whiskey Tango Foxtrot for the abbreviation <laughs> WTF, as in what the fuck. Oh. Oh, I thought Foxtrot was two words. <laughs> it's one word. It's one word. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm stupid. All right. So, yeah. Well, Whiskey Tango is, I don't know, whatever. Um, so, all right. Well, very cool. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Shout out. Fan it's show. for what the fuck. It's just a code for what the fuck. They sure. use the Army. W- Whiskey the Tango fuck? Foxtrot. WTF. What the fuck? I thought they said FUBAR. Isn't FUBAR a thing? It's fucked up fucked beyond up all, beyond all recognition. recognition. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Saving Private Ryan. Shout out. Fan show. Listen show. Nice. All right. Well, thanks for that, <laughs> no, Tom. No, that's from... Is it from... Saving Saving Private Ryan, Ryan. yeah. Is it Full Metal Jacket? Tango and Cash. Saving Private Ryan. Oh, I don't know. From Tango and Cash, too. Well, Tango and Cash maybe came first. out way before Saving Private. I think it's okay, Full Metal Jacket. It was, I know it was Full Metal made Jacket. popular. Yeah, right. Full Metal Jacket. Because what's his name? Just Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. But do it's they explain Fubar. it? Yeah, because this is Fubar is fucked up beyond recognition. Yeah. Right. Well, forget his name. The Joker. He's got his head. Yeah, that fool. Oh, is that Matthew you, John Modine. Wayne? Matthew is that Modine, me? aka Loud and fucking Loud and Swain. Swain. Loud and fucking Swain. Matthew Modine. It all comes back to Vision. Wow. You guys got to wow. show J Dub Vision Quest. Dude, I've never ju- seen it. Justin, you would love two things. Two things you would love. One, the soundtrack, and two, a young Linda Florentino. Mm. Woo! 
dude talk about jersey hat like you know how there's like some girls that like she had the hair like the what Ita- a bizarre story the, the italian jersey watch, uh, oh, this like, jersey like oh hat. i'm gonna help this girl fix her car by the way you can come live at my house yeah <laughs> while your car is getting fixed and then you're gonna sleep with my 17 year old son yeah it was very very bizarre but yeah. it was a classic hey it's spokane washington what are you gonna, what were you gonna say justin I've never seen it. We could live watch it together, and I'll oh. give you my live commentary. Dude, if you live watch it with Cabot, it's probably his fucking favorite movie. So, yeah. Nice. Shout out Vision what Quest. What was the Native American guy? What was Cooch. 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 And uh, Shoot was the state champ. They were Shoot just talking about him during NCAAs. Dude, oh, he, really? he goes to NCAAs yeah. and, like, takes yeah, pictures with people said. and stuff. Yeah, that's what they shoot said. That's what they said. does? Yeah, Shoot. Yeah. That's, like, his... his, like his Every year he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to NCAA. So yeah. I got to go there. I got to like for role. WWE. Yeah. yeah. Dude, fucking Zach was Virgil. like, Zach, Zach looks like, shoot. <laughs> I know who you're yeah, talking. That's crazy. I know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Virgil was with uh, mi- the million dollar like man. like a trench man. coat. Yeah, yeah. He does the big, he does autograph signings like everywhere. Yeah. Do you know, uh, do you know that he was a, uh, they called a rib in wrestling that his name was Virgil? Because so Vince McMahon, here's a little wrestling history for everybody. <laughs> so uh, the Million Dollar Man, right, is is roughly based on Vince McMahon, right? Like it's kind of like where they kind of develop the idea for the persona, the Million Dollar Man. So <laughs> the Million Dollar Man manservant is Virgil, right? So at the time of coming up with the Million Dollar Man and that whole gimmick the number one competition for Vince McMahon and the WWF at the time was uh, Dusty Rhodes, right? Dusty Rhodes, the American dream, Dusty yeah. Rhodes and NWA. Hard times. Hard times. Dusty Rhodes. Shout out Cody Rhodes. Son of a plumber. Yeah, son of a plumber. Son of a walker, man. Uh, Rick uh, Flair, <laughs> you bring down here your horsemen. <laughs> What did say? I'm that was, that was with good. kings and queens and eight and alleys with franks and beans. He, he says, Stardust Friday night. Ric Flair, <laughs> bring your horsemen. Dude. Cody Rhodes was a state champ. Yeah, yeah. Georgia. Georgia. Two time state champ. I think. Chris, are you a big wrestling fan? Pro wrestling? <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, really? AEW? You watch pro wrestling? You watch AEW? Dude, I was, oh, when I was a kid, I was very into it. And now I, I follow when I can AEW and oh! WWE. Watch, I watch it all. Bro, you should come on You're our gonna wrestling be watching Mania? Show. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be watching Mania for sure. Oh, dude, we do a live watch along, man. You should When's fucking Mania? come. April 1st and 2nd. Dude, you should do. We do a wrestling show called Wrestling Perspectives, which is available now on all podcast platforms and YouTube. Really? Wow, Perspective. you guys are really yeah. We taking have this out. podcast. Thing we have three shows. We have three shows, and plus we do a live watch along for big shows. But yeah, me and Tom do the Wrestling Perspective show, and yeah, no, dude. Oh, okay, big I, wrestling fan. Nice. Check it out. Nice, dude. I didn't know you Definitely. were into it like that. I love Cody Rhodes. Dude, in the nineties, I was like, oh, huge, dude, bro. I was Everybody the biggest was. mark. Biggest yeah. My favorite wrestler died though was Owen Hart. So oh. that was very sad. Wow. Your not life many is people full of heartbreak. Not, right. not many people picked <laughs> Owen Hart as their favorite wrestler. Okay. Dude, nugget? Long heart, brother. Nugget. Yeah. Nugget. 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 I'm not a nugget. nugget. <laughs> Dude, you know Owen, how, dude, Owen Hart was Jada, do you know why he was named though. why they chanted Nugget at Owen Hart? I don't remember that now. Oh, you know Chris? Damn. Well, hold on, hold on. I don't think so I know. Sean Michael named him Nugget. So uh, hold, on. hold on, Tom. So you can tell he that. said, but hold on, Michael's Tom, had a lot of heat. Hold on, you can tell that. The reason I was talking about Vince McMahon and oh, yeah, yeah. and and Dusty Million Rhodes, Dollar Man, yeah. right, is that they so Dusty Rhodes it, or Million Dollar Man's manservant was named Virgil, right? Vince McMahon's number one competition at the time was Dusty Rhodes, who was the NWA champion, right? And Dusty Rhodes's real first name is virgil so ah. when virgil goes to wcw and makes the transfer vincent they named him vincent after vincent, vincent kennedy, kennedy McMahon. McMahon. there you go there you go nice. damn i so, never put that together bro yep pretty cool so tom go ahead tell the nugget origin story please. so Shawn michaels was talking about the uh the heart foundation and like how they're yeah. a bunch of crap and he yeah. says it's like and he was describing now Owen. He's like, you say you have the whole fart heart foundation and you had him in the toilet and you take it's like a big steamy shit or whatever, you know. And he's like, and you're flushing the toilet. 
and there's just that one little nugget <laughs> that won't flush down the toilet. Every you can flush it, and it still keeps coming back. You flush it a nugget. He's like, "That's Owen Hart." And so then everyone started <laughs> calling him Nugget, dude. Oh, man. And he probably thought of that like on this, like just like that. Like that's back when you know they you were allowed a, to do that back yeah, then. When well, that's what AEW does. Like they're, they're I know, and that's why they're, people. and that's why it's better. That's why it's a better product. One. No, it's so good, so fucking. Well, that was good. the best. That was my favorite part. Is just when they the heel would come out and tell the home fan that they're stupid. It was dude, my favorite thing. My grandfather in the whole world. took that so serious, dude. He used to go and like curse them out, dude. And yell at the refs, and yo, way F is. Well, I was just gonna say, Dust Justin, I'm gonna send you someone called MJF, and you're gonna lose your fucking. He knows who MJF is. If you I watch love AEW, MJF. I don't want you, I don't. Oh, Justin. Oh, Justin, sorry, yeah, Justin. Name. MJF, you're going to love him. But MJF dude, is a great heel. Once oh, the Tonka best. retired, I, I kind of stopped watching dude, wrestling. Re- <laughs> they used to take wrestling so seriously. The that Tonka's not retired. When when not? Ric Flair, <laughs> when Ric Flair <laughs> broke <laughs> Dusty Rhodes' leg, right? Arn, a- Arn Anderson got Arn stabbed. Arn Anderson, that was the other guy. I couldn't think Arn of his Anderson name. Arn Anderson was stabbed the on the way out of the arena by the crowd that rioted after yeah. after he Who broke the f- Dusty Rhodes' leg. Do you remember the four horsemen? It was Frick Flair, Arn Anderson. There were a few interactions. Magnum, yeah. t- Magnum. Two others. Yeah. Yeah. Star, yeah. It was Starcade, not Stardust, but it was yeah, Star, Star whatever Cade. Starcade was. Remember yeah. that they bought uh, the uh, football player in Mongo? Yeah, yeah. Mongo McMichael. That Paul was WCW. Roma. Yeah. Dude, WCW had some good stuff, you know, either way. But, dude, Chris, I didn't know. Wrestling Perspectives. We'll get you on the show, brother. Nice, man. Yeah, bro. Awesome. New dude. listener. Brother. Nice. Brother. <laughs> so, okay. So, yeah. Very cool. I was going to awesome. say. Scott Hall had come up with something. By the uh, way, Raw last night was very good. <laughs> I didn't watch it, so I'll have to. Well, uh, the yeah. last match, the main event, if I could say is a main event, AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins. That's a fucking main event right there. Yeah, good, good for AJ. Awesome. It was yeah. really good. It was yeah, really they've good. They've been winter, kind of burying him. Winter faces at winter was gonna face Edge at uh Mania. So AJ so won. Been? No. Seth won. Well, DQ. Uh, Cody, are you gonna watch Cody it? Rhodes is no. supposed to be showing up, isn't Edge he? Edge came out. Edge came out and hit AJ Styles with the chair on purpose so that Seth Rollins got disqualified. Disqualified. AJ Styles won the match and will face him. But the whole time, like, dude, they gave him like they gave him like half hour. They gave him a long time nice. and the uh the crowd was chanting for cody so bad at the really end. Yeah, they're like cody cody and so seth is cody on is the so mic fucking and he's over. screaming and stuff like that and then he tears apart like the whole like he he flips the announcer's table he tears apart the ring he tears apart the like the stuff like seth's going nuts and it's that transition into the to the, the joker, joker. He yeah. starts laughing, ah, ha, 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 yeah. like going crazy. I'm like, Cody, turn into the Joker. Cody Rhodes yeah. has always considered himself the Bruce Wayne of professional wrestling. So, just saying, it's only right. Yeah. So, I mean, I oh, wouldn't wait. like, I wouldn't like it. I don't want that. I want Cody if he's coming in. He needs to, you know, hit Brock or Roman in the main event at Mania. That's the only way he should come in. Otherwise, it's a waste. But we're not talking about that now. You can hear all of those, all yeah, of those thoughts on the Wrestling Perspective show. Yeah. Available at Working Perspectives YouTube channel. So we're coming to the top of time. Uh, Jalen Dub, anything you want to say to your rabid fan base before we get the get it? Shout out uh, Starcade, Arn yep. Anderson, mm-hmm. uh, Rick Flair, your Hossman. Yep. That's it. <laughs> I, I, I want to continue screaming like uh, Mozambique. Mozambique. Anywhere. Mozambique. Anywhere. My, the whole, my the girlfriend will not life. understand it. The rest of your life. <laughs> Mo- Bring your Hossman. Any Sorry. love for Mozambique? A big love for shout out Mozambique. I have a big Mozambique massive, following. Massive. I actually looked Mozambique. up where it is on a map. Mm-hmm. It's like prime real estate as far as like the world goes. No, oh, perfect placement. Up. Oh, right by yeah. right off the coast, right by Madagascar. Yeah, I you actually guys might get that? move there. You get that data? Like, uh, oh, what's dude. the weirdest? We what's are the weirdest place? Mozambique, probably. Is it? That's that's for real. <laughs> Has it yeah. actually come up? Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Legit. There is somebody who listened to this in Mozambique? Dude. Yeah. A this lot my of biggest people. Fan. We Strictly have. Listens to me. Yeah. Me. They come from I mean, me. Yeah. Analytics. I, Dude, I could give you some numbers, but I mean, we should do that off air. All right. Well, this has been another episode of the Working Perspectives Podcast. I'm Matt Lavelle, accompanied today by Jalen Dove, Justin Richardson, Captain Jerkbeard, Tom Lavelle, and our guest was the one and only Chris Corona. 
You can find all our stuff and all our content on all podcast platforms and YouTube at Work Respectus Podcast. You can have us on Instagram at Work Respectus Podcast, and you can join us on the Twitter and the Tiki Talk at Working P Pod. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please email us at workrespectus at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe because it's a good thing to do. Also, link in the description for Leo's Barbershop. Please check it out. This has been another episode of the Work Respectus Podcast. Thanks for listening. Stick around for the app. Thanks. See you. Do you have a message or a story inside of you that you've been waiting to tell? Have you always dreamed of writing a book but are intimidated by the complexities of the book publishing world? Perhaps you want to use a book to launch your public speaking or consulting career. If so, please reach out to Scott and Bell Publishing, located right here in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Scott and Bell Publishing handle all genres and authors with all experience levels. Scott and Bell Publishing gives authors 100% creative freedom and a higher royalty split. They can be found at www.skotbell.com. That's www.s is in Sam, K is in Kite, O is in October, B e is in Tom, B e is in Boy, E is in Edward, L is in Larry, L is in Larry.com. That's Scott and Bell Publishing, where the authors go.